I have to go. I'm backing the Talia pick, guys. I'm back. I'm backing the Talia pick. Phase rush on the Talia. Interesting. Talia has to go Leandro's tier. Am I secretly drafting for Gen G after picking Lulu Talia? I don't know, man. I can't tell you about this. Here at level one, Faker can get uh, hit by a little bit of uh, a rock, but nothing too crazy. Bridge Lord Talia skin, best skin as well. To have the concern that maybe he was hey, going to get the caught. mana flow band stack. Yeah. Huge. I mean, it is significant, you know? Your stream's delayed. It's, it, it's I'm live good. on YouTube. It must be like um, five seconds. I probably have five I, second I like delay, Faker maybe, Max. on the Annie because it was very straightforward, very safe laning phase. Have, you know, the have, you know, the greatest time, but we know that Faker has a lot of experience on the Azir, so I also like prioritizing the pick for him just to make yeah, sure that he's skin. on something comfortable because maybe at the end of the I day, I don't really like Faze Rush. I feel like you could go unsealed Spellbook in high low, so that he doesn't get like too far behind against this mid jungle. And then you've got, you know, an angle there. Wait, what was this first I think Toby's very excited to play this mid matchup here. Should be auto, Q, uh, and then you should be on the back Zeka, lines. And then use an empowered Q to shove. Obviously, Toby did end up Empowered Q costs, like, no four. mana, and it's a hell of a good shoving tool. And had great laning there, but this is arguably a much easier opponent no. here in lane than what Zekka no. has been offering with Faker. So you can see already you use the work trying ground. to get some damage off, trying to stack that You have to use it. And coming no. in here and just putting on the pressure, putting on the poke at level one, trying to force Faker to have an early TP so he can't make any sort of impacts bottom <sighs> side where you have that prio with the Lulu pick. And I do really like how Chovy is approaching this matchup straight up. It feels like he's got an answer to that safe Azir from Faker. Faker yeah. could have at least no, had I equal shove absolutely. if he played Genji it right. have winning lanes across the board. Like, the Azir doesn't really lose in general because backseat Andy here, but, I mean uh, guys I'm not backseating Trovi and Faker but I done. I have the bottom lane we already right? talked about right like I do Alistair play in level one is pretty terrible no right deal. and you're going up against a enchanter support OP 10 Triss thank you for the prime Velio, Welcome, so Gumi Yusi and Carrier are going to be under that turret for a very long time also the top lane Peanut I feel like can just kind of hang out around the top side of the map after he clears his jungle and then you've got Pryo there as well yeah Delight he nice. uh is picking up that Lehens tech that we saw earlier this season, and you know, one of the reasons why. Guys, Lulu you know, is really good into these range subs, so I swear. Into these melee around, subs, and you just farm game. the area. Yeah, level three, they're seeing Gage on oh, wait, they're both dead. Knight comes in, and if you get this early gank in, you might be able to they're turn dead. the tides of this bottom You're lane dead. as the crash down is their pace, though. No flash, no summoners at all. Wait. And now, no, 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 they're overcommitting. Sedge is gonna clutch. Also have Pina making his way down here, as flash still available for Guma. I don't think that they have the damage quite to get in here fine, on the side Lulu. of Gen G, so it's just first blood to the side of T1 and now Wait, what is Lulu doing? Stunned up. He gets rooted down, flash in, but there's a shield on Faker as now oh T1 God, gets two insane. kills Chat, and insane. a win in mid taken away Chat, they're flash. Yeah, Trovi flash Trovi for literally flash with Faker. Oh my God, they're insane. Constantly trying to chunk Faker out, but flashes to attempt the kill is unsuccessful here. Faker is going to be able to catch this wave and you know, Chovy expending all of his mana, so even though you Chovy don't want to take health here, you're not get teleport advantage out of this play either. And uh, oh, God, the owner sacrificed nice a lot potentially to make that play happen Fuck here sake. in his jungle. Oh but even God. though there was some prio for Chovy, Peanut can't come over here and punish him. So uh, owner just skipped during this part of his jungle, that. which is why T1 didn't ex or rather, uh, Gen G didn't expect him to come over this quickly and why they were putting that pressure on. But there wasn't any vision, and his sacrifice ends up paying off in big dividends there on the bottom side. A kill. <laughs> And uh, an assist going over to the Zaya in the early game is fantastic news for T1. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's not game winning, but it's like um, to go it's like GG, top side know? clear into bot. Now you would expect a level three game. This is something that Rel is amazing at, right? You, you get all your skills. You're not going to get away from this champion. So the second she's here and Peanut's not, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a kill for T1. Like Toby in live though, looking for a pick top side, gets a flash. And, like they uh, didn't yeah, need to commit to for that. All like right down. here, it's they really just back just up. A numbers game here, and the Lulu Pino goes way too deep. He thought he could kill Kyria, bro. To Lulu. This isn't going to be able to offer the damage. Thank you, X. We're so it, back. It ends up being a second kill that goes over. On this can of tuna rice. Nice. Behind on this play, a rarity uh, for Genji's jungler here, but just ah, didn't these Talia, they're like Tried they're just getting maximum advantage across all three lanes, and Talia versus Zeus. Shit, yeah. It's uh, definitely something you have to be aware of, but a very tricky start here for owners. Going to get T1 to get in a very nice lead. Now, this lane doesn't change too much, even though the summoner advantage is pretty heavily into the side of T1. 
The summoners are on Guma, so mostly a defensive thing. So Pays and Delight still going to have control of this lane, but obviously a, a nice boon for the side of T1 down here to just get the kill. Put some damn predictions on. on. Yeah, I mean, you missed it, bro. You blind. The numbers, obviously, but that's a ton of gold she picked up um, on a weak side lane. This Baker, level six, and look at this. No flash for Toby. It's as free as that. The rocks are on the ground. Doesn't matter. Just going to delay his it's inevitable I've been death. killed like that against so many Azir's in Korean Solo Queue. They are troll. He is trolling. Yep, yeah. mid he is yeah, trolling. He flash because he used it on that previous play where he tried to, to get the kill on the Faker way over extends and man T G the T1 are bopping Gen G here in this first game like I, I'm They're getting bopped a little bit uh, legit by the insane lead that they have this early as here comes peanut down here to contest Drake and could at least get a win here force owner off but man this early game has not gone the way that Gen G wanted it to and you can just naturally get leads with Pryo, but hard forcing bottom side there, hard forcing mid, and then T1 just picking up the free pieces on the crowd. Yeah. This is gonna drag in. It's uh it's about as simple as that, right? Like Gen G, they're trying to pressure in the lanes, but Toby's like nearly under his turret. You're just not Fake gonna gapping get away Toby from and counter lane. Six, Azir and level a good Three Azir will fuck it, Talia, bro. Trust. In the jungle, right? So it's just insane, and Toby basically has to Talia, start, maybe, like, I would say 15 exactly. minutes Faker plus can start so, winning, you know, but, like, early game, dude, a good Azir will fuck. The range you just didn't expect, or rather didn't respect. Um, I think it was probably the better way of putting that. Yeah. He wants to try to make another topside play here, potentially. We'll at least get this ward off here and try to get some additional vision of where owner is right now. Not a ton of information gleaned. Try to make that topside roam into a successful play either. Zayas had to flash, but he's otherwise matching in the early game against this Jax too in CS. And man, everything's coming up T1 right now in this first game. Minus, of course, that first dragon. And now the Rift Herald is spawning here in 35 seconds. Genji will have this scuttle advantage here. And Chobi should still be able to maintain a modicum of mid prio. But I mean, it's the first Herald Orn fight, you know, that we've seen so many times go well for you. It's really better than Chobi's. Orn is so strong at warping the Probably. Those He's a better mid. Also back up here for you can Baker, be like a one trick and, and be better, be but it doesn't mean like you're, you're better mid lane. But I think simply put, they probably. I've already won't. seen him make so many mistakes in yeah, like the early lane. Yeah, might just let it go. You got the Infernal Drake. Just kind of settle things down as now they're trying to get aggressive here on Taguma, at least force some summoners oh. out. There's the cleanse, but Polymorph coming in. Already a lot of damage. Pay's going to hold on to the Moonlight Vigil. Doesn't want to trade ultimates just yet, and probably didn't think he had kill pressure with red white. And yeah, Skuma's gonna heal it up. They get the cleanse out. Nice pressure play when Carry leaves the lane. Genji yeah. still just have a nice comp going late. Dunbox, if they can stack dragons, it's winnable. It's a heal, uh, you know, used here to try to make that happen. Unsuccessful fake. What champion did owner play in my game today, chat? Your Chobi. Really just uh, not he able to regain Sin, control I think, actually. mid lane here anytime soon. There's always a threat of Carrier being nearby. He knew he was, uh, you know, not in the bottom lane. I think it was even clear. He was good. He never did any too risky so plays. He push. played just like slow. And Harold is getting taken. Oh, okay. Toby dead again. In. Toby here, he has Flash this time. So, owner just going <laughs> to pass go and collect Flash, I guess. The ult is going to come in here. Oh, that's a good clear ult, though. Take it down, so... Zayus trying to keep them around. Toby just trying to keep them Flick out lands. of the fight. Doran just They're leaps out. away. That's so There's good of an ult, bro. Is taken by Genji. The second they see Owner in their jungle, they say, well, we can take They get Herald, they get Dragon, yeah, they're back. We're going to group faster for the Herald, but Genji held on to it. Chovy's forced to flash again here, but his Weaver's Wall helps them secure it. If they end up losing that fight and or the Herald here, it gets even worse. But at least they're able to pick up the local gold as well as that's going to be able to be a lot of money here for one of these soul laners very likely here. Or they could just drop it bottom side and try to push Paze's advantage there. But it's really important that Genji don't lose this Give objective. Because otherwise, you're looking at T1 really just pushing that gold lead even further and Faker having probably just guaranteed money there. In terms of the scaling aspects of these comps, both uh, comps scale kind of differently. The ornaments are going to be really valuable later on in the game for some additional stats for Faker and for Guma for the damage. The side lane threat though, is something they will have to deal with. And even though Doran hasn't gotten massive advantages here in this lane, he's still Jax. He's still naturally going to be stronger and yeah. way more relevant later. So that's the one point of attack T1 hasn't found. They got the success in mid. They got those kills bottom side. But this Jax is still a problem they need to solve. Well, they're going to take a free Lulu on their way, I guess, as Delight is going to get Fake is caught. Right flash. Faker takes a ton of damage as Delight is out. And now Guma forced to go into that Feather Storm pretty early. Chovy, though, no flash. Peanut not going to overcommit on this one. And the root comes in. And Genji say, okay. You Peanut actually starting to dominate. 
Yeah, that was they're just on a dictate map. Call, uh, and Chovy's made to level 9 pretty much. Chovy That's all you need to do. As you mentioned from the last play, means he can't chase for any kills here. T1 will lose out on what was an attempted pick there on the Lulu. And nobody dies. You know, still a common collected uh, early game here in terms of Genji's gold. No advantages to be had, but winning that fight definitely feels nice as the Lulu now flashless is kind of a problem. If he does get caught a second time, I don't think he's going home. It's not the way he wants. <laughs> <laughs> the fast recall. Um, I have a $100 on Genji. Uh, they're my boys. For that at this point, but still. And Chubby's my best friend. Up very nicely in this game. You know, he wasn't able to help out uh, Whoa, either of the lanes Warren. in this case. Chill. So he was just pushing the lane here. Uh, not really doing anything else with that Ornhorn. Um, but besides that, Peanut has been able to farm. No, up they clutch this. I can feel it. Both They're starting to pick up pace. And it's not that, okay, Peanut's in your face all the time kind of counter jungling style. As, oh boy, we got Karia in a world of hurt here. Does not have Flash. And with the Unbreakable Will, not able to actually get the combo because of the Polymorph. But now Owner's here trying to help out, but he's almost dead as well. Magnus Storm's the Lulu alone as, yes, the kill will go to okay. Guma. But it's two to the side of Gen G, and Pays is getting free farm bot. Yeah, Pays getting free farm bot. Doran did back and doesn't have teleport, so he's not getting anything topside here. But this is additional plate and Guma. Guma's fucked really too. He can't get in. Board, let's say. Yeah. Plus, we have Harold. Give Harold. What could have happened there? Give solo it's plates so to the, the Philios. It's 100% free, and Pays is actually going to be able to drop Aye. there. They're going to drop this for him and pick up so much money here. Is Baker also a little bit overextended? Looks like they're He's not going to commit any further. He is, is here, but the knockup. Nice. The Empowered Q. In, Peanut doesn't have his ult just yet. Just got it now. Not even going to need GG. it. GG! Let's go! Right Faker is inting. Very overextended there. Not uh, respecting the rotation up. This is like jungle. perfect Flash, spot for Talia now. Like he was gonna be if Chovy is good, which he is, over, it's GG. Was in the area. Uh, okay. If Chovy is yeah, good, which he is, go it's GG. Like if you put me on this Talia, this GG, we won. Mid, nothing you that put Chovy, it's like... It's also probably won. Kills. Yeah, Chovy was by, now he's probably picked two up good two. Plays. It is what it is. And uh, it's going to be Cloud Soul. The scanner just ran out from over. Cloud Soul, let's go. Pays, here, don't be stupid. Don't Pays, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. This is going to be a potential as Pays. This is... This is very a very suspicious as now the teleport's coming Wait, this is wall. actually good. We've got Guma there. cleanse. Where's Chovy? Still behind. Now the counter teleport coming in. And Pace will have to flash going away on? this one. So Karia going to take a flash on his way out, I suppose, as both teams commit heavily. Chovy ult caught it and then yeah, try and base. He doesn't want to miss mid lane farm. T1 and Genji read it well. They have the ward there. Try to send Pace forward to bait T1 into the engage, and then scoop them up and punish there with the Weaver's Wall. But T1 also then realize, okay, this doesn't make sense. Why is Pace walking up like this with no vision? They don't take the bait, and they're able to get out. Even Karia successfully avoids death here on the Alistair, still holding his ultimate. As this is Faker up in this lane, doesn't have a ward in the river, and Peanut just waits it out till the shove comes through. His ultimate, as you were mentioning, was also coming back up, but he won't end up ultimately needing it here because the, he's able to side. Even if he flashed, he was dead, so he just held. Faker has pushed this Azir in lane so many times here in playoffs. Like, he's always trying to get play gold. Every time the T1 are behind on a play somewhere, he's trying to push that advantage, but this time just pushed a little bit too far. And Genji now, as you can see with this gold graph, take back the lead here, and it's a significant one with a two Drake advantage here as well. It's yeah, two Drake it's the Drakes that's going to be a big Soul, problem, which, I'll be honest. You know, some people would say, oh, it sucks, it's not Hextech, but I actually think that Cloud Soul is pretty huge for this team, especially when you're trying to play globally, when so you're trying good to for use Talia. the Jax in the side lane, even the Talia as well. Uh, just that extra movement speed to get around the map to outmaneuver the team fighting out from the side of team one can get very huge, even in the jungle. You know, the rift that we have here, everybody's going to be really fast. I think that's going to be really nice to the side of Shen Ji. Yeah, with as, the Talia especially, yeah. you know? I mean, the, the fact that they have the side lane pressure and the ability to rotate up to protect it so quickly is fantastic because T1 do have some control of the top side of the map here. Faker has been pushed into that lane. It's going to be a trade here of this turret for the Herald. And that's, of course, the first turret of the game going over the Gen Ji. Karia may be forced to ult. He yeah, does. there it is. And this is a win to the side of Gen G, right? Like Guma's safe in mid, trying to farm it out as 
Owner spending a lot of time. Why are there so the many Aussie casters for League Mid Beast? We bottom. can't play the game, but we can cast and talk about it. So that normally, what happens? Owner out here as the flash is going to just be wasted. Deny the herald. Um, but at least owner is not able to pick up the eye. Yeah, they deny the eye from him. He is able to pick up local gold and escape with his life. But uh, whoa. Uh, okay, well. Maybe whoa. He, get he gets eye. it. <laughs> at what cost? I guess you know he will get the eye. His flash. <laughs> He gets out, he has but he to gets ults for it. It's actually not even that bad. Out, cetera, but he does get away. Okay, well, you know what? I'll say worth on that one. Um, it looked a little <laughs> bit silly. It looked very risky. But yeah. he is ultimately able to just kind of pull the wool over Genji's eyes there and uh, go ahead and grab that one. So that's quite significant, actually. That he picks up the play feels a lot better now. Uh, 4T1 is Chobi. Let's go. Uh, Chobi, oh, careful. E. Is gonna he's already used it. The, the seismic jump comes in, but it's not going to survive against three. He played as too aggro on that. Once again, Your E counters them all, but he used it too is aggressively. This filled with action, and both of these teams relentless in their punishes of even one overextension, even one misstep. Thought yeah. that I was secured. You thought you denied it. Nope, owner's making the play on that one. Chobi says, oh, they've got to be leaving the area now. Crip Crunch, thank you for the primer. And then, uh, nope, they didn't. Uh, carry makes the play happen there and his Alistair has just been honestly phenomenal I think it's been a pick that he's been so good at here in playoffs yeah. and at the end of regular season as well it's one to look out for in the draft here I think that Braum ban really does sting quite a bit I and mean, we yeah. talked about it in the draft quite a bit and the Orn pick I mentioned was going to force Chovy to probably go Leandris he did ultimately oh, make that choice as well <laughs> oh he's he's concerned uh about yeah. the rotation <laughs> and he's like oh I can't get the eye but then Got it, got it. And he's, uh, he just tells Faker to get out. I love I love the comms he refers to Faker as young. He's just like, be on this. get out young, which is the, the term for older brother. It's also like See how his E came out? <laughs> if he E yeah, the other like direction, he would be fine. But, you know, he's definitely, he's feeling the pressure. And uh, a bit of a risky play. Northwest. But owner kind of gets away with it. He does lose his flash for the next five minutes, so that does mean potential engage is going to be not quite as good. Yeah, I mean, he has hex flash. It's not the end of the world. They've got a lot of setup with this Orn, too, so he should be able to get in position for that Magnet Storm. So I don't think it's going to end up. Is he bet for this uh, game or the whole series? Too, series win. Uh, massively or too drastically here. Let's see, though, because this Drake is now spawning here. It I'll be collecting a cool coming up in just a moment dollars. here. T1 will have to delay this if they want to contest. And See the teleport coming through. They've got that Rift Trail. I mean, this is super valuable. This is why he went for this uh, attempt to pick up the eye. It's going to give them a little bit of prio here. Zayus does have that flank angle when he rotates in. Uh oh. Shelly, what are you doing? Shelly, a little bit confused. And is Shelly, what are you doing? On the minion wave. Now, now she charges. Trying to zone them away. A 5v5 for priority in the mid lane. As Dragon is massive, okay, by both the teams way. Definitely want to make a run at this Cloud Drake. It is just an individual one. Genji could potentially give it away. But they've already teleported Doran in, which means that they might commit to this one. Yeah, Doran it has the flank angle here with Toby. The Weaver's Wall engage. All right, well, that ult was a bit questionable. Not going to hit anyone. And now the wall can be broken by Zayus if they even need it. Carrier just going to dodge the Moonlight Vigilance. Now Gen G just want to get out. But Faker has other ideas as he's going to take a ton of damage. So he's the one that goes Trovi down. is just going to fucking clean house with Talia here. Trust. Lulu will be the casualty here on the side Keep of Genji, so Keep fighting. they need to Sejuani, don't take her out, finally. Should have been so end, much better. Lulu will go down, but Genji will push them away, and this dragon is Grima going to be, might be able to carry this. side of Genji. Yeah, it should be. They don't have a jungler right now, but they do have tons of damage here on this Aphelios, and he's got the damage. support of Doran here, so they're going to be able to get this done. Looks like Faker just dashing straight into the rocks on the ground there. Takes a ton yep. of damage at the beginning of the fight, sacrificing himself to try to look for the engage, but loses a big portion of T1's damage in the process, and they can't actually win the fight decisively the way they wanted to. I thought the setup was so fantastic. The way they used Herald to get Pryo bought enough time for the Magnet Storm to be ready here for Caria. Now they have so much control, and even the flanking Weaver's Wall isn't necessarily going to be problematic here. The Chovy ult here, I don't know. Like, huge Doran's on one Detroit side, Guma's on the other side. Mid to be destroyed. Looks like it's not going to be a dive. But watch I'm just here set up for Faker. The Faker goes in. Trovi didn't even E. Trovi didn't even E. Faker coming in, bro. He like so he actually could have. He's isolated. No one can heal. And even though owners engage, follow up is decent. The damage is just too much with this Talia and Faker's deleted early. Missed the yeah. WB. The issue too. being really is that he's going for that play. He only hits Sejuani, who, by the way, again, like I mentioned before, Peanut is incredibly farmed up. Like he hasn't 
gotten a lot of Box. kills, but he has like 150 CS, so he's got a lot of items. He is really tanky, and, you know, that's not really the target. So at the end of the day, Peanut and Delight going down, and, you know, the carry staying alive on the side of Gen G is going to be a big boon to them. Now, Guma did get a couple more of those kills, so he's feeling pretty good himself in terms of carry potential. Yeah, I, I feel like there's definitely a, an opportunity here for T1 through really strong engage. Should coach him? I Maybe I will. Arguably the I'll send him a direct direct. Even those Ooh, we're going uh, right, uh, Void money, next instead of going and finishing the Archangel. The, uh, wild Growth. I think T1 just have way more ways to warp team fights, and they have fantastic turn if they can ever get control of objectives. The question is, will they ever get that control versus Talia? I don't Jax know. Here, I don't think we're gonna have that much magic resist by the mid game. But Talia, that is you starting probably to go. get pretty big here, and uh, we'll have Void Staff second, so he's gonna yeah. be hurting a lot when he does finally come into these team fights. I, I do worry for T1, but all it's going to take is one it's Baron fine. turn. Just right? in case right he gets now, behind, it'll like always void, T1. so it's sweet. We got control of these now we're going to get a Baron Rush. We got an Orin, and let's force that fight the way we want it. I mean, you can lose the game over this, but I like that they're trying it. Yeah. You got to go into the team fights as T1. That's how you're going to win as now the Magnus Goom is, Storm. Goom is, is not in the fight. Look at Guma. Look at Guma. Guma is caught in the pit and absolutely obliterated. It doesn't yeah. matter because Gen G are just winning this fight. Zay's going to go down as well. Double kill the pays. And now they're going to try their luck at this Baron. I think that was one of the only ways T1 could have won this game. But the engage wasn't good on the turn. The Magnet Storm was just completely avoided by Gen G. They, they basically parted and, and avoided it completely. Uh-oh. No. Uh, Faker coming over. I don't know don't do this. it, Faker. You're going to get nice E'd if you dash. Damage, but he can't go on before. You see oh Karis my God, is he's backing. Dead. And now Faker... He is going to skirt around Oh my the god, rocks. he's trolling. I'm not sure if he gets out here, actually. Flash committed to oh, by Kyria. Peanut. Uh, just for the headbutt of Carrier. But now it's Carrier who has to pay for the sins of Faker. Thanks, Faker. Faker. Away, Thanks for nothing. Gigi, they are going to burst into the lead after yeah. this. I mean, this is this is almost the, the beginning of the end here with this amount of it's control. Now the end. They can't Remember, they do him. have sole point. Now, look at the setup here for Owner as he turns to try to... to Watch Guma getting... That's such a good Talia ult. Look at Guma, guys. Look at Guma in the pit. So he's just instantly set up to die here. And Guma, isolated. They left Trovi here ate it too. Baron Bounty. duty. And so he just is also dead straight, straight up. And Faker's the only damage that you have left in this comp. And with no engage, no turn, there's just no way he could do anything. And then he comes over for the contest Like, he shouldn't have been looking for this. this looking for this is so troll by him. Rare wrong call, actually, from Faker. Just like, why would Faker uh, be even trying for, anything there? Flash carrier, then it really makes sense. Get the knockback here to hopefully fully save him he pays for it with his life yeah I, I think faker oftentimes is is riding the line of you know was this a great play or was this just a total fail that one definitely a total fail um definitely not the position to go in there and i think t1 is playing this game and those baron those two baron decisions right to start the baron and to uh to contest it there by faker is t1 basically playing this game as if it's already a loss so like well we'll just See yeah. if we can make a miracle happen here, because if we don't, the game is lost. And it's something we've criticized a lot of our LCK teams for. Um, and even yesterday, we saw it as well with Honda Life in that first game. If you don't do anything, you 100% lose. And, you know, they tried. They have good turn. But Genji just outplayed them in the... Magnet Storm. Doesn't even look like Trovi's gonna finish really the tier. Now, he's not, Genji, he doesn't even look like he's gonna I mean, finish the Archangel. He's Baron to get Pryo for that Cloud Soul. And this Jax is not... Um, you know, he's, he's not going to be dealt with at all. There's just no answer. Yeah, I, I think T1, they were a bit rushed, but I, I think forcing Gen G into a 5v5 on the Baron was all right. It's just the turn was was pretty... It was abysmal. Uh, it, it was abysmal, right? So the execution out there, I think the call is fine. Uh, maybe a little bit fast, but either way, now T1 are really behind the eight ball, and Gen G... Uh, with this could Baron, be a 3 0 series. I'm not going to lie, but looking like right? this first and game, I guess it depends on this Cloud Soul. So we do have the teleport now coming in from like Doran. T1 he had every opportunity to win this game, and they so look uncoordinated. Tanky build also will deal with a lot of the tanks on the side of T1. Huge oh flick by Chovy. <laughs> it's poked to Leah. Oh man! Look at that. Well, now they can't fight at all. Yeah, that's that. That's it. Like he just hits Guma for two thirds of his health. You ever just get Chovied? Yeah. Um, that was such I a guess good Actually, I'm not lucky enough myself. <laughs> like I haven't yet. I'm, I've asked him a few times. He's yeah. denied me uh, my request. Um, but I mean, mean, now you have Doran just going. All right, well, cool. I don't even have to be a part of this team fight. I'm just going to take this turret. We still have Baron buff minions here. And they're going to be able to get this inner here in bottom. Should be able to now siege up and take this mid inner. And Baker, you know, he's able to get that push top side. They pick up something for it, but 
It's just grasping at straws here is you're never going to have map control ever again to set up for those engages. The only way they could have set up for a turn was Baron. They lost that opportunity, and you're just not going to get another chance to have that proper setup on Baron in this game. Yeah. And on Elder, you're going to have to walk into a... Oh, 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 they're going to catch yes. the oh, just 100 oh. to 0 And Karia is also going to go down, taking out double kill for FaZe, as the Magnet Storm is just desperate and T1... They don't have a leg to stand on now, even in the team. Big fight, okay, Carol, you're going to bounce the Jax to the sky, but he still has Counter-Strike, and he's still going to take out Owner and Gen G. They are just ruthless. They're not going to yeah. waste any time to end this game. Nope. They're just going to end this one early. We've had a lot of one-sided games in our playoffs, haven't we, Valdez? This is going to be another one on the list. Gen G, I mean, the early game, definitely very close. Like, don't get me wrong. They're not going to end, actually. They're not going to back away They're going to back early. away, but... This game, 25 minutes, the mid to late game, completely one-sided, still to the point. Inhibitor goes down here, and that boring back control that they gained from that last team fight and the Baron is now even a bigger problem here with no inhib. As this is a great play for Peanut. Dashes over the wall here, and he's just fishing for the Zaya. If he gets the Zaya, he can commit to kill it uh, to kill him, and he does. And it's just threading the needle on that Sejuani ult, and then here. You pulled in the Jax, and he doesn't care. <laughs> Baker's is instantly reacting here. It's a reflex to try to push that Jax away, but Owner gets taken out as a result. It's crazy how often Goom has been picked this game without Gen using G Flash, here, Alt, anything. Gold. He just keeps getting yeah. hit. I, I like that Gen G. I wonder why he's not using uh, it. You know, they're, they're really trying to do some. Uh, I guess he didn't have damage, cleanse perhaps, for that last you know, sedule, but he could have just, just okay, ulted it. Let's just push side lanes. Let's one three one. You know. I guess he's hoping his team tanked it. They look for the very. Uh, tricky kind of engage there onto the Zaya. They catch her off guard. His owner might just die here. I mean, he has flash, but he will He's be dead. forced to use oh. it as that comes in. The blast cone kind of trolling pays, but I don't, I don't think that Genji really cares. What is really this fight over here? Doran will have to use his stopwatch as he bonks the cow on the head. Ult in, Chovy. The push just continues, and Genji are bopping T1 on the head. They really are. I mean, this is just... Uh... Business as usual with this kind of a lead, and what we were talking about before is Genji just, they don't mess these up. You know, they don't make mistakes in the late game when they have advantages like this. They are oppressive, and they will find opportunities, and as T1, you know, based on those calls we saw earlier, I think that they they knew that this game was probably done. They made a few attempts to have miracles happen on that Baron, but they will come up empty, and while the Nexus still stands, this one is definitely looking like a Genji win here at the beginning of this series. And it's Talia Jax, you know, it's super oppressive as owner. Not no really flash. safe. No flash here for owner. Talia ult. And they might just bide their Talia time. Talia They're just going to rotate into mid. And again, Gen G just as five. They're Sad. not even giving Doran a chance to side lane, even with the teleport. There is a Baron here, so they're just going to go for that instead. It's now the turn coming out of the jungle. T1 do not have vision of the jungle at this point in time. Gen G just running at them. Faker isolated. Karia trying to peel for him. Guma Choi Bay! Lands, lands a flick. First comes out from the Talia as Faker is just not back. Guma, 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 Flash finally. Will just threaten that back line. Guma can't do anything as he's hunted down by the Jax and Gen G. Now it feels like they really have broken the back. No, so can they, they win? Don't they got no wave. wave. Yeah, not yet. They'll they, just wait for that. Yeah, we're waiting for that super mini to come over here and then it is going to be as easy as you <laughs> like it uh look at his face redemption dropped on top of the team here keep you on the goddamn minion and uh i gotta say about oh. this it was a pretty oppressive game from genji it was definitely a little bit of mental damage potentially as you mentioned here genji just making it look easy yeah Mental and emotional damage done in game number one. 20 kills to the side of Gen Easy one out of start, gentlemen. Here we go. Three out of Ari's four wins are Chovies. He's three and zero on the champion. He has been our best Ari player this season. It's been a very niche pick. I think we've seen mostly our weaker teams try to solve drafts by going by Ari when left open. It hasn't worked out for them, but it has worked Electric out for Chovies. Electrocute resolved and secondary. To me, Jesus. I think he's the one player you can 100% trust that he's going to get it done on this pick, uh, like his win rate indicates. But, I mean, you know, we've yeah. kind of jokingly given the, the moniker the Tristana license, but I feel like in terms of Ari, like he's the only one who's allowed to play this <laughs> pick right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Zaya. She's, she's getting in there. She agrees. Um, and yeah, she it's kind of funny, there. too, because after the Ari changes to mostly her spirit rush faker was the first one to come out and show that hey this pick is actually really strong and i think it got like a couple of nerfs after that
but now it's definitely not Faker who's in a position to pick this one up. It is Chovy, as we are going to have a start here on the red buff for Owner. Saw so, yeah. yeah, a lot of pressure from Genji at level one, trying to get wards down, trying to spot exactly where Owner was going to start with this pick. And no wards. You know, into what uh, Genji is playing, it's really hard to get a ward up to spot Peanut's passing here in this game. So, no information, whereas Peanut, because they have the stronger level 1 fight, is going to be able to have a ward there on the Raptor camp. So, when the owner does path up there, he will be spotted, of course. So, this is a really good start here in terms of information already for Genji. And, uh, yeah, there's that 3-0 for Chovy Peanut, also 8-0 oh on God. this buy. I mean, look, Genji, <laughs> they only lost uh, to KT this season, so, you know. The trading yeah. is so <laughs> these, hard. These numbers are going to be pretty inflated. Well, the there's Ari. also that bro. Like, he just got a proc <laughs> corrupting <laughs> and W and try and get that electric proc off. That did happen, you know, again. <laughs> currently dodges the Oilers. Stuff happens, and they were probably preparing for playoffs anyway, and bro way overperformed. Genji did not. Um, but, yeah, they only have one loss. Yeah, and it's on the lights for Khan, which, as we know, is exceptional. So I, I'm not worried about that one loss. So Peanut here is actually going to wrap around and maybe try to grab an early flash here from Faker. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the weak foundation oh. is not going to flash until this moment as he will Chubby. take a big amount of damage. <gasps> if that charm hits, Ooh. I think there's a decent chance they just kill him. And and just to, to make this even more clear is, yeah, this is why I said four of the wins for uh, the Ari or Chovy, or three of the wins are Chovy. Three out of the four. Yeah, three of the four in this matchup. Um, going back to that point, as we had a little bit of fight here, someone would be like, wait, wait, wait. Um, but the, the level three for Trovi was hit during the gank. I think they were really yeah. trying to time that. He didn't well, have I should charm. Have waited. If he has charm, Faker 100% dead. Like, no matter what, 100% dead. If he yeah. gets caught by the Vi like, like that and gets charm, he Classic didn't have level doesn't three after the fact, wasn't able to it's probably because he soaked charm. XP. But man, that was like a minion and a half away from actually just being first blood here at three minutes. And it's just that razor thin, the margins in a game like this. And Peanut and Chovy, the mid-jungle duo, we've talked about it a lot, but it's for good reason yeah. that this Ari pick has worked out so much for Chovy. Which is why, again, you know, going back to the draft, like T1's draft is all right, but it's it's not them playing to their win conditions. It's not getting Zeus ahead. It's, it's not doing what won them a best of five against KT, right? So this is... This is where we have our issues with it, but we'll see. I mean, here comes Jovi trying to face check an Alistair. Karia doing his best. Lehen's impression, rotating up to mid after the first Green supports from his just sitting carry. dude. It's here so comes annoying. Pina, and I don't think Zeus has any idea about this, but Doran is very low. There's quite a large uh, wave here as well. Gonna On force the it. Side. As, yeah, they're going to go for this level 5 hit from Zeus. He's still going to flash away as Peanut just blocking him. And no nice. belly poop means that... Oh, he's going to save it, actually. He did have it. And Doran is just going to get pushed away. Holds on to his flash, though. That's will big. have flash That's advantage in the top lane. Yeah, they really just want to get Doran ahead. Of what has been a rough matchup for him here. He's significantly behind on CS. And actually, the committee of that play puts him low, even though ZS had no mana. Now Doran has to yep. back and commit teleport to catch this wave. Dragus this is runs really this awkward. lane. Bit of a... Misplay here. Peanut found the pressure angle, but probably should have just been happy with Zayas backing off with Flash there. But instead, now Doran actually feeling the hurt here. And actually, Zayas will back, so we'll get to catch the wave here um, as he teleports in. But at the end of the day, like, this is the advantage that you have is this Gragas counter pick here for Zayas. So even though it's not a strong pick where he can carry necessarily, he is putting the pressure on early, which is exactly what he needs to do. And then bottom side here, you see Owner with that Kha'Zix he picked up is going to be able to steal away some of these camps, punish Peanut a little bit here, start to get ahead of the farm game, going for that early Dirk. And once he gets the Umbral Glaive, if they have map control, it becomes very difficult to play this Ari Vi composition. So if things are going well for T1. They need to continue to do so because only one hiccup can really be disastrous and, and lose you this game. But so far, so good. The train is still rolling smoothly across those yeah. tracks for now. And it's going to be interesting. I Mid think Genji are no actually going to commit to challenging this Drake. Oh, give it, give it, give it, give it, could give it, give get it. pretty iffy because Jovi's just not here. Okay, they are going to back off. I'm like, I don't know if you want to fight this 3v4. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think I had mid lane control into the dragon. Owner doing most of the farming once they hit level six on the Kha'Zix, whereas Peanut now on the Vi doing a lot of the lane ganking, which is kind of what Owner was doing in game one on the Rel. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the situation here, pretty good for T1. Faker having that level six advantage, I think a huge part of why, and Chovy obviously not being there, a huge part of why they just simply could not contest that. They wanted to so badly because what's so cool about Zeri with the Ari Vi setup is 
the scaling aspect of your comp is all about the Zeri, but she's so well set up to get early kills and have that Zeri moment. So if you are in position to challenge there and Zeri ends up getting a double, you know, at six minutes, then hey, you, you're you absolutely probably just hey. going to win the game off that play. So they wanted to contest, but uh, ultimately could not. So good for T1. Baker in trouble. Level six oh. hit here for Toby. He's going to be pushed into the turret charm. as the charm is going to miss. Oh. So that means that Peanut will not commit. Toby's taking a huge amount of damage from the minions as oh. well. We're gonna lock on a Faker here. The soldier's going forward, but Chovy going for the aggressive play. Faker's flash just coming back up. Probably would have been able to kill Chovy there, or at least force him to flash if he uh, had it five seconds before. Really great Chovy play from Faker. Looked like he was in trash. big danger there, but uh, he outplays him. Really great Emperor's Divide there with the minions. Chovy gonna have to eat this honey fruit to uh, be able to sustain here in this lane now. Teleport down, of course. Mm. Pretty happy he has that plant, huh, Bell is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the the health plant plant is all right. I just don't like when blast plants deny me some action in my League of Legends. But uh, yeah, it's going to get him back into the action in this case as Caria kind of a funky spot, but he's okay. Six. No, he's just going to get ulted by this area. I'm like, yeah, he should be okay. No, nope, just going to have to run this one away. Owner's here. Owner is here. He's going to hop on in. Pace just dashing away. Delight says, Bro, I will what? flash. As Owner has flash. Oh, and I didn't go for the kill there. Here by Doran as now he's the one putting on some pressure. Yeah, Karia drops Ignite, but otherwise you're a pretty nice trade up for T1. Looked really scary there, pays its level six. He's got the all-in angle. Karia's a little bit uh, out in front and doesn't have his ultimate yet. He's level five, but owner comes over and he's able to catch the play there. Forces Delight, in fact, to flash. So big trade up in terms of summoners here. You and know, babysits true, baby just series, man. Getting through this <laughs> early mid game is exactly what T1 needs sure. to do if they're going to have any chance of winning this game and, and winning these later objectives. See what solo it's going to end up being as owner is because he's Kha'Zix going to be able to solo this very quickly and he will have the support of Faker and Karia as well. So even the Doran has Pryo, not going to be able to go for a contest here, especially with that bottom side play going so wrong. Mm -hmm. So both early objectives here to T1 feels fantastic. Yeah, definitely very nice. You know, uh, Genji haven't really been able to uh, get any of these early kills Such with a slow fire. early just, game. Yeah, Pina did hit level six, and he Currency, has his ultimate available. So I expected them to actually try to fight for that one with that spike, but not going to go for it. And you know, effectively neutralized here in the early game. Now, Denji still do have a nice amount of scaling in their own right with the Jax and the Zeri, but it definitely feels pretty nice for T1 to just avoid any of those early uh, skirmishes from the Ari Vi. Bomba. Yeah. And, I mean, this is... Okay, once again, Owner's going to come up here and look for something here. Now, Peanut's a little bit uh, oh, far away. He's doing red buff right now. This could actually work with the wave escorting Owner through. He's got six. He's going to get dialed on as you can't dodge the Kha'Zix Q as the barrel comes no in. No way! And he lives. Arcane Comet not quite going to be enough. Doran holds on to his flash. And that was a very close call, but Doran handles it well. And will they actually get the counter here? No vision. Maybe. Yep, no way. does have flash, but no there's way. three members of Gen G, and the back completed here for Owner. Just an ult away from Death as Doran, pretty low, and uh, it's probably not going to matter. Holding Counter Strike, you see Zeus trying to. Oh, Doran oh. really flying close to the sun. Flashes nice after flash, he dies, dude. but it's still first blood to the side of Gen G. Yeah, I'm not sure about that flash, but perhaps scared of Pro Comet was going to proc on him again or something like that and decided that he just wants to be 100% sure he doesn't die because if he dies there, it is pretty horrible because he won't be able to get this wave. Don't think he can go over and grab a turret play. I don't think he's going to be that greedy here, but you know that owner backed. He's on the other side of the map. He could. And uh, let's uh -oh, see how he reads All right, just going to face dead. check the Kha'Zix. Oh, he's that Kha'Zix. As owner will just collect a Yes, Harold as well. As Doran is. He is going to take this yeah. turret plate. He is going to greed for it. And I, I think it's when you see that play bottom side there, you feel pretty confident you can pull it off. Kha'Zix is obviously not top side, so they can get more down here. Trying to go pretty yeah, deep for this one. Trying to get on top oh. of Peanut, but the peel from oh. Rakan is huge. Guma taking a lot of damage, but it works out for him. The turret shots getting carry out and Guma so low. Nice, Doran, he's going to nice, get here. Nice, Doran. Go. As now Kill me, Kha'Zix. Not going to help out oh. as Kha'Zix. It looks no like flash. a dead bug once again as Doran going to pick up a double kill in the bottom lane with a huge it's teleport. Net win this is massive. I mean, Doran, he went back, Close got game. some health back, just enough to actually be able to carry that fight after going and completing the plate after seeing the Kha'Zix there, so kind of beating the Kha'Zix in two places at once. Okay, you're put, making the moves mm. bottom side there. All right, is Pazia, he's gonna <laughs> be totally fine here as uh, Zaya's gonna take a turret is shot. He? I mean, 
Two barrels hit. Cask available. Going to be thrown in. Good position. Oh, Greg, yes. the At the very the least, he's pushing him out of the lane. Yeah. That will work out. A good position there on the turret to make sure he couldn't get pushed through as he is punished here, bottom side, by this Kha'Zix. But that means plate goes in. Doran heads back after that plate and then will teleport in to save the day here. As this Jax got a lot of money with the plate, the kill top side, and he's going to come in here. And this Jax as well Jax is really so fed. As this dive takes a little bit too long, gives him the opportunity to come down here. Yeah, Zia Gragas on the Jax is pretty chill. And he's got the ability to come straight to this turret, go in for the counter strike. The blast plant here, a little bit awkward because he gets the <laughs> counter strike before they can launch. And that means Guma will go down as well as Owner, who is still nice. flashless on this Kha'Zix. Yeah, it's definitely really huge for the side lane pressure of Doran. Now, Owner's still doing a great job here in this early game. Unfortunately for T1, it is an Ocean Soul. So they get those first couple, which are nice in isolation. But now this Ocean Soul not going to do all too much, especially because Gen Z is not really a poke comp. They're just going to be going all in on you and, you know, uh, not too many tanks on the side of T1. They have Zeus and Caria a bit, but Zeus is going to be going AP, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. Ocean, anyway, not really... <laughs> Great. It's not really case. yeah, it's not really good for either team, but you know, feels bad because that was one of the big edges, like you said, T one having the two Drake advantage means that it feels less bad or less good, um, because you're not really gonna be threatening a soul that's game changing. It'll be slightly game changing, it'll be fought for, but it's not Gimmer be the, the most flash of advantage. Just hold flash. Had. As the Umbral Glaive is done now for owner, and despite what looked like my could have been the catalyst for this composition for T1 really struggling that bottom side play going up big for Genji. I think he's still going to be relevant here, still has a lot of money. He's actually going to find Peanut here on these Krugs. Force him off. Yeah, looks like Peanut nice. is Peanut feeling go. the pressure very nicely. Just going to push him away, take the Krugs down. The question becomes now, Veldas, what's going to be the real first fight? Is it going to be over the second Herald that will lead to, you know, Drake Pryo and things like that? Or will Genji just opt out of it saying, okay, well, we have a lot of aspects of our composition that scale better. We have the Jax for side lane pressure later on. I think you on. need... We don't have to hard force. You need um, Zarya we'll Mythic first. And, and we'll really see if Zarya can actually, Bank with is going no crown. real strong items here, fight uh, this early into the game. Because I think committing Bank here is and 150 losing this fight is a way for T1 to He's really just kind of close Joe the final out. door for what the, the game is going to look like here. Because then you're going to give way too much money over to oh, Faker. Thank you, man. If he wins that fight, you're going to have the Gragas starting to become really strong in terms of his engage setup. He's going for the Everfrost build here. Um, I think Genji should think twice about trying to hard force on this Herald unless they have straight up complete control there because the advantage you gain from it, uh, I think definitely are heavily outweighed by the risks. Yeah, I, I think, you know, a lot of the advantages of Genji's composition is that you can do a good job of picking and choosing fights. You have insane amounts of mobility, so you can look for an engage if someone looks out of position, but otherwise, you know, you can go in, try to poke, and then just back T1, away. T1, two dragons in lead, like, dude. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see how they do pilot it as the damage the kills are onto a really Jax, Jax is into in an alley Grag. I actually think Shoot T1 win this game. There's not much is happening. Faker has really parked himself up in this top lane, just trying to take this out, pick up a plate for like, I think they'd have to make Not a massive bad. mistake Farming to lose this. Well. He already picked up that stopwatch too. Like he really feels like this fight is one that Genji's gonna opt into. And I think Genji feel like they're priced into it because of the deficit here in terms of gold, but teleport here. We go. Chubby, ever here. Frost, TP. T1 don't have control of the choke points, so it's really hard to actually start this one up. Uh oh, owner. He's gonna get knocked up by the Rakan. Oh, owner, what the fuck? Kha'Zix. He doesn't flash, he doesn't jump away, just doesn't expect. The That's why you go by sure, Ari, bro. Yeah, usually, Bit of a mistake, and Gen G will run away with this objective. Usually, the Rakan, the natural predator of the Rakan, is the cause. It's not the other way around. <laughs> Charm oh, lands. Well, now we got a charm to come in, and at least looks like Dorn didn't have his Counter Strike. As T1 are trying to fight for this, this is a three v five. Okay, Faker is not in this fight. Um, get the Herald and peace out for this. Just a bit of poke coming down, and Gen G get the eye. Uh, will they get even more? Is the question. Zayas really flirting with the idea of trying to stop some of these backs and getting a late well. pick. <laughs> Don't Not stop. Happen. Too much stuff here. Back, they can bro. at least he delay though to maybe grab this mid turret. Will be the second of the game here for T1. A lot of extra gold for Faker, so that's a nice play. But man, that was a huge disaster for T1. I mean, uh, two fortunate picks onto owner or half of Genji's kill gold they have this game. 
And that's going to be Harold that goes over as a result. And it's not like the fight pick and team fight and Genji back. ahead or anything like that, but just a really unfortunate moment here for Owner, who's just unable to avoid this Rakan engage. He had the Rift Herald pulled all the way to this choke. And T1, it's a rare case of just Flash. being completely oh, on different boy. pages and very disjointed. Like, Baker's still trying to deal with that top wave. The Zaya isn't here. It looks like the rest of the team had called. We're giving this up, but Owner just hanging around, holding on to the Herald, and then gets punished there by a great engage from Delight. 100% kill contribution here on this Rakan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the fact that we went and said, okay, Delight's on the enemy team, we have Zaya. Uh, we're just not gonna pick the Rakan, we're gonna give him an opportunity to pick it. I think that was also a bit of a question mark in the draft for me. The guy is just insane on the pick. You can't really give Delight uh, the Rakan. Looking, uh, honestly, a bit, you know, invisible in game one was Delight as the team won, but now he's he's doing all the work, it feels like, as T1 are going to start nice. are we going to give this? Now, Gen G, not a huge amount of indexing into fighting wow. this one. As we mentioned before, it's not really huge value. We're going to have to contest next dragon. Inside T1 as Doran, he's just going to get a lot of value here in a side lane. Yeah. No one to answer for him right now. Faker's heading over, doesn't have teleport, so... You know, he's since it's the inner, like he should be able to get here before this turret takes too much damage and won't lose too much CS. But Doran is going to just get a ton of experience here as well as big money. Zayas looking for a potential engage. There are three Gen G members about this. down here. <laughs> okay, yeah. it looks like he was setting a trap, but he's uh, coming back. Yeah, he's, he's okay. Doran, and that's how you respect Flash, guys. <laughs> that's how you do it. You have to flash Perhaps that. Perhaps owner can launch the VOD from uh, from that one because you know if you're gonna get caught, you're in a rough spot. You're in a you're in a weak spot. Just flash. You know, like d don't even think about it sec twice. Just just get away. Just play it safe. Yeah. Okay, Zayas really trying to make this oh! work. Hey, what this about this? Yeah. Nice try. Chubby. Teleport will be forced, I guess. Question mark from Doran. Ari does damage. He's going Copium. to join on the bottom side. Faker just in the top lane. He's like, Faker actually hates tall. Yeah. He's got okay, good positioning well, here. Jax has to a bit messy down there for a second. Everybody wanting to fight over that uh, bottom inner turret. Scrappy. Scrappy indeed. As uh, now owner does have his dust blade. Man, he can actually kind of carry team fights if he gets Ever the opportunity to get back line access. That's build. much easier said really than slow, done. No damage. Uh, but T1 actually pushing this mid wave here. The fact that they got two turrets, or actually now three, is quite critical because it allows the Kha'Zix to actually go and clear deep vision pretty safely with this Umbral Glaive. And that's what you need to do with this composition. Otherwise, it's just going to fall on its face. If you can know where the Ari is at all times, watch Come those Rakan flanks. Then this comp is actually insanely strong into what Genji has put together. And with the gold lead that T1's hold on, held on to pretty much this entire game, I, I think that it's still winnable from here. Like, even though there have been some some errors from owner this game, yeah, it's it's definitely a pretty strong position. Now, the next fight is going to be very telling, and I think Genji will have to opt into denying the Cloud Soul, even though it's not our most valuable. You just don't want to give that over. Ocean Soul. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Ocean. And, yeah, I, I do feel like both teams have an angle to win this one. It's still very close. Like, uh, again, Gen.G just have so many ways to engage and to pick people off. But T1, definitely a nice amount of scaling, a nice amount of front to back. You have that kind of uh, X factor with the Kha'Zix. And not just because he has an X in his name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he can do a lot, right? Uh, obviously, the last fight wasn't, wasn't a lot, but... Um, definitely so... can find those back line targets. So we're just going to have to wait and see how the execution goes, I'd say. This one definitely could go either way. Is Peanut sitting in the enemy jungle? Doesn't look like anyone is really looking to get in there at this point in time. Yeah, looks like he wanted to maybe catch someone coming over here. Like Guma clearing this mid wave. Okay, Guma just going to walk that one out. As T1 are T1 starting Baron. Baron at 20 the T1 minutes. Baron call. Yeah, I think Someone realized, please okay, water. like they're trying to set a trap. We actually have positional prio here. Zayas also teleports in in the nick of time to try to deny Toby entry. This is a great setup for T1. Yeah, no TP for Doran. They just want to go for it. That is a dead Zeus. As now the fight may Baker's heavily caught. go in the way of Gen G. It's the knockup here on a beat up, but he's got stopwatch as Baker is going to go down for free. Gen G just trying to get as much value on the backside of this fight as possible. As they do get two kills, but T1 did take down mm -hmm. the Baron. Let's see how much else Gen.G can get. The problem is they lost the Baron buff on their solo laners for it. Yeah, and Gen.G are going to push here. Yeah, they're just going to push. Gen.G got to open the map out. a little and bit. I, I, if they I get mid plus the, the attempt to take Baron was fantastic, but you that lost was... too much here. And 
When we go into the replay, I want everyone to watch Faker's attempt to, to, to try to turn and win the team fight because it seemed again very unlike Faker T1 how disjointed this in. goes. As the teleport here from Zayas is fantastic to zone, and T1 wants let, a little bit more. Let, let Zayas die, over here. and then thinking they can win this is just great. Like right now, just let Zayas die. Though, Faker insane. goes over the wall straight into the Rakan charm here, and he's got Crown one step for the Emperor's Divide. Does not peanut through, zone is, but it's just a peculiar yeah. call when probably should have sacrificed Zayas and get out of here and save Killa. that Baron buff on your Azir so you can actually have a little bit more pressure in these lanes because now no Baron for Gragas, no Baron for Azir means it's only no really the Gragas. three man in mid that can push. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You keep that Azir alive, you can you can uh, not looking wait good boss. as well in mid, so maybe you can like try to stand up four v five, but. That follow-up, like Zayus going down is fine, but the extra is not. His owner again is going to get knocked off by Delight, who just has his number in this game. And now Jovi, the pick potential, the mobility, everything coming forward, and maybe it's late, oh, but 21 minutes in, Zeri gets They're a double kill. Yeah. That should on have the verge been Sol for them. Lead here for the first time in this game as well. As, I'd say an ult committed to deny a back. Jovi's like, all right, yeah. well, I guess I'll take those. Um, Interesting. I mean, I you know you're delaying this, but now Guma potentially in trouble. Yes, Featherstorm trying to force that out, but oh, just gonna walk away again. Baker. Oh, I mean, he's in the side. Imagine if he had Baron buff here. You know, it would have felt a lot better. The thing about this Valdez is the composition clearly disjointed from T1. You could just tell in the draft they were super uncomfortable, and like owners two and three on this cause has been picked multiple times. We mentioned it straight up in the draft when you watch the lock-in of the pick when he's talking to the coaching staff or interim coaching staff, you know, whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, yeah. he, he, he looks clearly annoyed by the, by the fact he has to play this pick and he's now been just destroyed by Delight super hard twice in this game. And oh, he's that was, they're coming didn't even the, hesitate. The dragon here and they, it's just a really easy pick onto the Kha'Zix and like... T1 just looking all out of sorts here, and it's so unusual, especially when you consider this team so far in playoffs have just looked so robust. Even after a game one loss in, into KT, they bounced back in a huge way. Not so much here in this series. Yeah, Gen G just looking like an overwhelming force at this point in time. As Jovi they, knows he has you know, TP again, advantage, they're going to shove these side lane waves. To the side of Gen G, um, the gold cross. still very even, although. Nice. The goal doesn't tell the story at all. I, I, I do agree. I think T1 looked very disjointed, and they're about to face check this. It looked like disjointed. Zona That's such a good way to check it look. here. And I think get the scan down. Uh, Valdez, I think that Gen G looked like a well-oiled really machine working to together. Pull more than their T1 weight just to win this like game. Like they parts. are going to be so critical, and if the game is won, it's going to be about Faker's damage. You know, he's been sit given so much time inside. He actually has a ton of money, even though he's zero one zero on this Azir. He has that Nasher's Tooth. He can do more damage output than the Ari who went for the Everfrost Zonia's build here. The utility from Chovy is going to be great, but the damage isn't there. They're more reliant on Zeri and just combos with the Jax and the no Vi. I think there's definitely a way Genji to win these fights, but it has to be Chovy don't need no damage. Guma who just out-damaged no, Genji Jax. fights if they're going to win this game, and they can't Vi be picked. With and this is just so Zero. terrifying to watch when there's no vision here. Yeah. You know that that Vi is lurking. Yeah, I think Denji are just doing a really good job of this suffocating play style once again. As this teleport, again, a, a little bit questionable. I don't, I don't think you're getting a lot out of this. Maybe they're going to take out the yeah. center because of this. Probably could have gotten it anyway. Um, and now Faker's just on the top side alone. There's no like Most of or anything like that. There's not even a Drake to fight for with that teleport, but just a bit opportunistic, perhaps. To be looking for a play, not going to quite work out, and now. Doran's going to teleport up top, which means both solo laners on the side of Gen G now do not have teleport for the fight. As okay, nice little engage from the side of Caria, and Faker's doing some good damage already. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Away. The teleport usage here from Gen G has been a little bit questionable at times uh, in this game, and you know, Doran feels really priced into okay, this Nasher's Tooth Azir is going to rip through this turret. Well, the Faker is good. Here, I think it'd be better off going into a crushing position, Drew. Divide and try to kill him with the teammates he had fine. shadowing him there on the top side. We gotta be careful about this, but Faker spent so much time up here and got so much money. He should be able to purchase a zone. This is like a team that hasn't played with each other enough. Really. You have to think with the components look, he's already put together. Like the calls and I think T1, there's definitely an angle here to win this game. Like, and I and I know it looks like yeah, there is. It's, it's really close, Wolf. Like, why are you guys talking about this? Like, T1 don't have a chance. I just feel like what we've seen from them thus far and how strong Genji's composition is and how many angles this Zeri has to pop off in a longer fight yeah. is really scary because all it takes is killing one of Faker and, and Guma, and Zeri just out damages you and they have great CC so 
Yeah, this game is really on a knife's edge for T1 specifically. Like, they need to win this fight swimmingly to win this game. 30 seconds on Barra, and we're already having that vision fight now. Yeah, taking a look at some of the spikes here, we have basically Doran and Peanut uh, very much in sync, both buying Black Cleavers. Obviously, Doran a bit ahead because he's the solo laner, and he is moving towards the Zonia second, so, or third, rather. So. Uh, definitely pretty tanky, robust builds from both the top laner and the jungler once again. Just Peanut trying to get in there, and uh, Genji just trying to choke out as much vision as possible. Teleport here from Zayus. This is going to be the commit here for T1. Uh, so Doran's just backing in a bush. Has to go and use Doran's his stopwatch. Fine. Is now Chovy. Gonna uh, miss the Chovy. charm. Chovy. looking Slow. for the follow-up. Going to get in there really aggressively. Is going to just force Chovy to use a spirit Dude, rush. that's some big ults. And that's about it. I mean, that's pretty decent here for T1. Baker. Ow does have his Emperor's Divide, and now the choke point is controlled by T1. Bit of a whoopsie there from Doran. Stopwatch broken Driving here. For a minute. We'll be able to get the Zonias, of course, but that really did hurt Genji's opportunities there. Chovy missing the charm, missing the Q as well in that choke point means T1 just kind of walk around this Baron and say, that's mine. And Kha'Zix going to be able to threaten in 30 seconds here, potentially grabbing this Drake of uh, Genji or over committing for Baron control because Kha'Zix clears Drakes so quickly with his passive. So something to think about here is the Jax isn't threatening anything right now. Of course, all inners are, or rather, all, all outers are down, and even the bottom inner. So he's not really threatening any real damage to T1. He's catching a wave. And with this Sundis turret, they should be able to set up for Soul now. And Kha'Zix can just kind of hold on to that while they push mid. Soul fight take Gain two. Looking for a flank. He's got a control Chubby has ult again. Yeah, this is a pretty good angle, actually. Yeah, uh, again, your help. targets, it, it's not the easiest fool, composition to engage on. Like I mentioned in the draft, like if nade plates are off, I still think that T1's got an opportunity with this draft, but I'm not sure how they're going to play it out specifically. Oh, the team they're going to try and as, trade. We'll save that for another time. I think time. this is we good for T1. I don't Baron think they can rush it in time. To start this one up as and the Trophy's already used all. The they're trying to turn. Point. T1 win! T1 win this! Here from the side of T1, and now Doran gonna have to flash out of this one, and oh, the comes in! Huge from T1! That's fake and making these calls. And now T1 will start up the Oh man, this is just such fantastic map Peanut needs to steal. And the teleport from Faker just right in the middle of the team. They've got Ali and Greg, there's no way you steal this. Peanut has flash, but won't be able to contest this early. Faker gets it! Faker gets the Baron! Not even allowed to flash out of that one. Owner Shit. trying to land a slow. Shit. Saves getting really oh, deep in no. for this one as well. But the W speed up and the miss they on the, the W from Owner means that he just walks it out. All right, they will be able to, to do a ton with this Baron. I mean, this game is 100% is T1's to lose Baron, now. Gigi. I really loved how they set that one up. Clear the Drake as quickly as possible. That Faker causes damage. Faker waits because he has teleport so he can show up to the Baron fight. They send Owner over first, and Gen.G just He's up in 15. destroyed on this subsequent fight. Not even close, and Chovy missing a lot of critical charms here. Might be his first loss of Aria on the, se the season if things continue like this. Two and hips down now. All right, trying to do it again as the charm, charm angle goes again. Wide. He can't it. land anything, bro. His ground and Doran's caught again. Just going to get comboed by Caria and put into the death realm. It's now Zeus. And Guma trying to lead the charge here. They don't have a wave, but they're just going to sit on the turrets. 5v4. They have a lot of damage for these turrets as well as a cannon minion oh, yeah. here now. And this might just be the beginning of the end here. Gen.G, they don't have really great tools to turn this. Delight's ult's coming back up, but even getting into position is going to be really difficult. He's got the flank. He does, but there's just a Gragas zoning. Gotta kill Faker, gotta Alistair kill zoning. I mean, yes, so he gets up to Zaya with Featherstorm, and they're just not even gonna get an angle to do it. They're just gonna end the game. Will T1, and they, they didn't tie even try, the bro. series. We officially have Shit, the series it's on the tied our series. hands. Come on, Gen G. We have a series on our hands. It's back and forth, and it's game one going against T1, and then T1 take game two themselves, just like they did to KT, except this one is definitely a different feel. You remember in that series against KT, it was like an Omega 24-minute stomp from KT, but then it was like Omega 29-minute Omega stomp from T1. It was like very volatile. Whereas this series, you know, it feels like Genji slowly, in their own manner, suffocated T1 in Game 1, and then T1 kind of n nullified yeah, all of the strengths of Genji in the early to mid, and then slowly won Game 2, so. Yeah, I really feel like it was one of those games where voting for Faker was the big brain play because he had... Obviously, that one big mistake, which is why I ultimately just voted for Guma. I actually voted for Guma just because I was like, he was the most stable player. <laughs> he was God. definitely not a player of the game. Well, who was really was the question. That's why we had a crazy vote. It was super yeah. split. So have you but already won CS? In this game, 
I think he's that, gonna hit level two off the first know, wave. The Sejuani, we always talk about how Sejuani needs some melee synergy for permafrost. Not even kidding, you She has of that. a great ultimate. She is very strong in the early levels at setting oh God, up ganks. Fake is a psycho. Um, but when you look at oh what my God, the follow up for trade. that glacial prison is on the composition, and there's not a lot of great ones. You know, you have the Rakan, obviously. If you are lucky enough to have the feathers down, you could maybe pull pull that. But it doesn't synergize well with Corky. It doesn't synergize well with Nar really in team fights. So. Owner is just going to have to be a, a big frontline tank in this comp, and it feels like you're playing against as Gen G here, a comp that's a little bit out of sorts in terms of what it wants to do. It's got poke, but it's also low range. Like, it's got a Gnar for engage, but it's very situational, you know? Yeah. And that's why I feel like T1 is just going to have to hard clutch it and play the map better than Gen G if they're going to win this game. And they did that last game. Yeah. Right, mid lane is so over chat. Like, mid lane is so over already. Has played a huge Keeping helping of Nar so far in his I could TV relatively back in two short minutes. career. And definitely, uh, you know, it was his debut he doesn't game. Even get played tier. the Nar. We all were like, whoa, this guy's really good on the Nar of all picks. So definitely one that's very comfortable for him. He's like played a couple back of tanks, and buys nothing. but now going on to the Nar. Please show me. We'll see Please how it works miss. out Please after giving Doran the Renekton. Uh, which was uh, definitely a bit of a question mark in our minds, but we'll see how it does play out. Yeah. The Doran has been up or down in the series, right? And that's certainly a concern. And that's been historically just the way it is with Doran. That's just what you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get the best version or if you're going to get, you know, yeah. 7 out of 10 Doran, which I think is kind of what we've rolled today. It's not 3, 6, 9, but it's like 4, 8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a that's a great way of putting it. I actually think that's like he's double as good when he's the eight out of ten. Like, yeah, they never um, show mid. Or he's a, otherwise he's just half a door and he's a doe or a ran. <laughs> no, I think he's back. It's even. <laughs> oh man, like, he just has this, no I mean, help. He has a five-letter name. I could down quite an do it yeah. exactly the way, but you know, it's two syllables. Yeah. Makes there you sense. Go. Okay, hey, we're gonna take there on the owner who does smite away the scuttle. He's trying to get Ooh. over the speed here, but uh, the flash. Is it really going to get him into a safe spot? It's not a lot of damage between these two, but they finally do get the job done. As owner, I hope that Scuttle Crab was worth it. Yeah, I think the answer not so much. Um, huge chance here in the crowd for the first blood as well on the side of Gen G. Really feeling that advantage there. They get with the Renekton and link that up. And it's just a rogue Sejuani thinking she could scuttle. She uh, definitely could not. And Flash is also down now for owner. So just to add insult to injury, this early game Sejuani mm -hmm. with no permafrost setup is going to really hurt. First strike value. First strike. Plus nine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. faker did. Um, okay, Toby's going to shuffle way in there, but owner going to be spotted on the ward. Toby, not really the best of trades here. Oh, He's he going to get hit it. by the flail as well, but Peanut will make his way in. As both junglers trying to make a play here, Faker very low, but so is Chovy. Chovy having the better range at this point, as Peanut trying to push Owner away. And that's going to be a win for Genji in the 2v2, just in terms of pushing potential. As now, got a little little scuffle down in the bottom lane. Yeah, Not Chovy, much happening. he also went for Doran's ring and has a mana advantage here, so Faker actually forced to back now with no teleport. Feels very awkward. He could stick around. And Owner, once again, caught out. Well, the Blast Plant is there. But he's super low, and Delight's actually here now as the shield does come down, but it looks like just a fed kill over to Pays. So easy. As owner is going to go down for the second time in yeah, this game. All the because of Faker a little mid. bit, uh, you know, uh, it was a little bit ambiguous for a second there, but as soon as you saw Delight not top, uh, dropping that Ignite and you knew this area was coming over, and she's going to get a ton of money here early. Yeah. And it's not even Gume Carrier's fault. So <laughs> owner wants to get on this Sejuani pick. Looking a little bit uh, uncomfortable. We saw fault. some it's small errors from him on the Kha'Zix, and... Not having his best night of League of Legends here, as he is going to secure the smite, but then awkwardly caught in a position where there's not great flash angle, and Zayus doesn't come down to bail him out. Like, Zayus just says, no, man, you're, you're done. And, like, he flashes towards yeah, Zayus, I mean, but Zayus is just not going to help him. There's not much he could do. You, you have a Corky in mid. You, you can't fight for okay, that either. That so he was just trying to get out, but it was just way too late and then they're definitely sh like screaming okay he has no flash feed it to zeri and if if chobi for example like if owner had flash when uh chobi got hit by faker then faker tried to look for the play then maybe owner could actually force a flash out of chobi and get that kill but he didn't have flash because of that top side play and it's all snowballing down 
Yeah, it is a bit. We had a mini oh, Jerry they can moment, fight this. not a real one, just to kill. As now, just walking in, nearly smites it away. Does Peanut? Looks like he didn't quite have it, actually. So, just going to be another owner death. They do get the Three mountain deaths drink, on owner but early. this is very concerning as the sheepish grin is on the face of owner. Another the three, this one's not really on him as much. I mean, he's got to be the guy who secures the smite. He has to stick around. It was a near steal, as you mentioned, but I mean, that's your job as the Sejuani who's flashless in this case. So if anyone's pointing fingers at him for that one, I think uh, probably rethink it. But at the end of the day, he is 0-3 now on the Sejuani. And another kill going over to Gen G. Toby's got a kill. Pei's got a kill. Peanut's got one. They're just fed in three critical parts of this early game already. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't say fed, but accelerated. And yeah, it's like the anti uh, treasure hunter, right? Now, now just uh, Doran and Delight need one. As Pays is getting uh, run down here, he's going to get knocked up. That is a dead Zeri. It's a good two v two. I've never seen one as Delight now trying to extend this one. Doom is six as well. Way down, but it's just a good two v two. Win here for T1, taking out Pays. And Guma carry a duo. They don't need no jungler to make plays and pick up gold. And Pays once again, just a little bit uh, far forward here. He, I mean, we've had some individuals in this series who have not looked themselves. And I think uh, on the Genji side, he has had some questionable moments himself. Despite picking up that early kill, is now 20 CS down. And the laning phase here going swimmingly for the Zaya Rakan. Swimmingly. And Peanut, this is what he does best. He gets a lead in the jungle matchup, and he punishes. He's getting in onto Owner now. He has his own red buff. And Owner's just trying to secure a red buff of his own at this point. So, does land the oh, spike. Oh, Owner got it. Turning this one is Peanut not really in a position. Peanut's to dead. A way to get out is that's a kill actually going over to Peanut. Maybe going too far is now Caria making his way in. The Emperor's Divide, but it's 2v4. Shot Peanut Doran, into the game away. He's kind of left to the Wolves here. He doesn't have his flash just yet, but it's very close. As he is just going to dash his way out, barely surviving in that trade. Well, it's a disaster for Genji here on the top what? side. Really trying to push that advantage, as you say. As he went up Dragon as well. Comes in and tries oh. to steal the red buff away. Has Doran's help. The Narbar has oh. fired. Zay is sitting on no bar. So they thought in the 2v2 there, they win that absolutely. But unfortunately, the Sejuani ultimate there from Owner is pretty fantastic, and they have the amount of damage they need to turn that. Miss my got six, got the ult. Not fucking really great. doing a whole lot back, obviously, with red just plus Aegis. Harold. So uh, it's not the end of the world here for Genji, but a lot of that lead has now kind of evaporated. And as they will be able to take this Harold topside. Meanwhile, Kerry has six. Yeah, trying to make a play here on a delight, but he is going to crash down away as Pays gets charmed up and he doesn't what? have any summoners. The Zeriel comes out, but it is too little, too late. Two kills go to Guma. I don't know if we call that a Zaya moment. I think we call it a Guma carrier moment. It's the second time in a row they end up finding a small advantage against this Zeri in lane. Level six gets hit by carrier. Pays is absolutely not respecting it. Delight is forced to flash. And man, this is uh, starting to look like everything that Jinji was doing well in the early parts. All of those mistakes from owner just don't even matter anymore. Yeah, a lot of it does get shored up on the bottom side of the map. Pina did Fuck. get the Rift Herald, but now we're getting plates solo over to Guma. As we do see Dude. Peanut trying to get what Guma he can. Now we There's have no a way. bit of a lane swap. Doran going to go bot, even though the Rift Herald is already dead. And Kari is on a control ward with level 6. Yeah. Like, there's just... Thing. And the objective is to deny the ward clear. The ego to go in here is zero is insane. Six. There's just no winning this one. There's not even, I mean, yeah, you, you're going to lose minions. You're going to get zoned out. That's really unfortunate, but that's just how it's going to be with the wave state Invest there. The and there was just no save in that play. No explaining it either. Yeah, like maybe because the 280 carries were like similar in terms of items. Nobody really has that first item yet. Like maybe if you have a very confident, straightforward, like 2v2 engage onto the recon. And a bet against the goat. Even then, it's, I don't think it's a good idea, right? Yeah. But the fact that it was just like very okay, much MSI. disjointed, one person going in at a time and like Pace just kind of getting run down by a, a recon that has charm up is... I still very, believe in gold, but very iffy. he won yeah, with the I mean, cool people got through that. lanes. Delight just coming over. He was the one who first got caught, but he was so far up in the lane trying to get that farm. Um, we'll end up uh, buying the Storm Razor for just a second, um, but of course did ultimately go for the shiv. I don't know if that was like, if he actually bought it or if that was just a UI bug, but anyways, he finishes the shiv now, but bit of a weird early one. As you can see, the gold leads here pretty reflective of the situation in this game. Like, yeah, Jungle got ahead, and Pei, or, uh, Toby rather got ahead as well with that kill there. Pei's got a kill fed to him, but, you know, that's not, that, that doesn't just default when you the rest of the lane, and uh, Guma is big. 
Faker has pockets. Oh, maybe Pina can trying to force it package. here. Let's see if he will be successful in that. Faker just holding on to it. Sees the rail as now, after that knockback, is going to be forced to use the package. He wanted to hold on to that because this dragon fight is about to start. But yeah. now he does not have it, and he's about two-thirds health. Yeah, and his package placement there was pretty good. It meant that Genji couldn't actually rotate over faster, and uh, ultimately, you know, get what, early uh, dragon with Corky, and then you just get packaged before like every dragon, and you should be able to secure. It. Actually, isn't pretty good shot. By T1, they're unable to actually rush it down fast enough. Now, if Pay's gonna get some plate gold here as well yeah. with the Herald getting involved. This game is scrappy, yeah. Valdez again. Uh, it's just good positioning here from Gen G. They're trying to pressure the bottom lane. Now, Guma is pressuring mid as this is happening. So they're trying to get a trade and maybe a steal, but yeah, owner's just gonna back away. Gen G, take the Drake. And Guma says, I hope it's worth it for me to get two plates because now Guma is massively fed. I mean, he has two kills, two plates in mid, one in bot. You know, he, he's just feeling pretty good about himself. Like, Pay shorted up a bit on the bottom side of the map, but yeah, yeah. not nearly as much. Jose has picked up Hearthbound Axe, and that's when you start to, to win this matchup against the Renekta when you have that range advantage and you have the ability to just kind of chip away at him. So he's actually feeling really sure. nice uh, in this current game state as well. Not going to be good enough to grab a plate Renekton's or anything like that, Renekton but he's things. now no longer really ever afraid of this uh, Renekton and the Maokai that obviously was bottom. Yeah, stride break or what? that lane really hard. He's even going to take Krugs here. And so you have two really big threats. Um, coming online here with the Nar, obviously, and the Zaya, who's massively ahead. The Corky is always going to scale. And yeah, T1 aren't able to steal that Drake away. It would have been amazing for them if they had a two Drake lead on top of everything else and the scaling they have. Not that successful at pulling that off, but it is Chemtech Soul that we have here, so not the most critical Drake at the end loud. of the day. So it's still going to be a slow paced game. And T1 with the speed at which they've already gotten the Zaya into a really nice spot. How they so good at farming? I'm 90 farm at 20 minutes. Right now, and locking. Uh, down pays is often Same, going right. to be the issue in this composition. We talked about how awkward the follow-up for Sejuani ults and stuff like that is, but maybe the damage just is too much. Maybe it won't ultimately matter. We'll have to wait and see how these fights go because we haven't had a real true 5v5 setup just yet. Baker even denied his package on the last one. Yeah, plate's still up here. Thanks, Baker Bally looks bad. like he's going to get a free plate in the bottom lane this time. Did this in game two. Where he was just able to sneak down into an open lane and take a plate we'll drink before they go away. So, as you mentioned, uh, the Corky will scale eventually. You do kind of have to go Hex Drinker, uh, which will delay your build by uh, a lot. I think it's, it's fine. 1350, exactly. Yeah, but either way, it, it's going to take a while before you even get one Mythic, let alone, you know, two, three items, so where you're really pumping the damage. Yeah, you're really just kind of a package button in the early parts of this game, and that's you know, fine if you end up getting the first rake like uh, they did. So you're like your monodon into two stack or stack it actually or something like that or worse than a mountain in this case for their composition. But Zayas here just really controlling this matchup here in sides. And Valdez, I mean, this game is still winnable for Genji. Like, don't get me wrong, but I I'm not ready to put all my eggs in the pays basket right now. Let's just say uh, in terms nice. of what his performances have looked like tonight. Maybe you could put it in the Chovy peanut basket. I think that's uh, kind of where the bread What's is up, buttered BJ, right now for the side of Gen G. Um, just in terms of like who's got leads and stuff, so maybe they can set something up on that side. You mentioned this uh, side lane here, Doran essentially just. You think Bod would be viable? Judy, trying to not get poked out by Zay. I think Bod's underrated, but you'd be like really good at it. Pays There's only a few good bots. Can lane pretty safely here and pick up farm. One of the cool things about Zeri with Shiv Stop is just it. that she's never really going to get picked. She's never really vulnerable. She's not putting on any pressure in this game either, but he's going to need, um, Pays will need his teammates to help do that for him to potentially have a Zeri moment here in this game and start to be relevant. He will eventually become relevant, obviously, later on, just by natural. Um, getting caught by these players, you to be careful with that, but naturally will, of course, be relevant later on in this game. And if Genji can get to that point and T1 can lock him down, Prez, how we doing, boys? Big, even though the Welcome. early game wasn't his best. All right, let's see how this goes. Watching the Joby T1 Gen G series of sub. Could be a big difference maker in this fight. Perry looking for the 100 angle. buckaroos on Gen G to win. Left side, they're going to get in onto the rail. Actually, the light just gets 100 to 0, but that's the support. Oh, this and might be a good fight. Coming in from behind. No! Pace! Onto Zero, no! who take him out. No! And now it's 5v3 in favor Joby! of T1. They Come have on. the damage. They take out the Renekton. And Toby is alone versus like 8,000 ah! people. It's a double kill now for Goon. As T1 will take down the fight. Oh man, T1. King, what's up? Thank you for the T1. 
This guy's coming up big in playoffs, and Doran looked like he was gonna just control that fight. He got the that first was dash, so close to being Gen G fight. Back so close. His teammates, because he sees the Nar engage, can't actually lock down the back line. So Guma gets out through that choke point. The Renekton not gonna make an impact on not that choky. turnaround. So Faker's here on the flank as well, trying to layer in <sighs> some damage, and they're trying to put. Genji essentially the on did they not here on this hold of the aggro. We talked about the, what's the only fault you really have to the Sejuani ult? The lie just gets on. one Maria shot. Dorn has perfect on angle. The Goes on Faker, but then but Zeus gets a perfect stun. No, no one was peeling pace. Too much damage in this NAR. Like he's actually straight up a Should we not have ult? Carry to the Guma Yusi uh, Zaya, who's already pretty big, so pretty damaging. And if you don't lock down those carries, the longer fight isn't going to be yours. Even though Joby was set up to potentially win that later fight, fight it was just a numbers game he couldn't do. Yeah, very close one. But T1 now will skirt into the lead. They're looking to take down skirt, this first skirt. Chemtech Drake. Looks like Genji had enough fighting for for now. Although Peanut is hanging around here, so it's delight. Just a Mega Cone denial, I suppose. But. Yeah, this is going to get very Nara. interesting now. T1, they have a 4-0 into Zaya. <laughs> Kuma was already fed, and now he is Omega fed. And this just Omega gives more time fed. for your Corky to get online. It's going to be Pause. Uh, pretty huge in that way. Remake. It's a remake. Yeah, I see why. Uh, Let's remake the game. His, a mouse, it's a mouse issue. Um, he was looking at somebody saying something, so it looked like this was communicated very quickly. And since it's a peripheral issue, it should be solved very quickly so fortunate for us thank you guys for your patience those sneaky mice Zayus was the one who had the issue apparent it seems there's a little fan he puts in front is, of his uh, uh is kind of off the rails this whole series has been hand, off the rails hand on sweaty. um pretty small one just have nice. some special clutch power i feel like th this playoffs where they've just shown up in a big way and they have definitely i think continued to, to surprise us getting the big zoom in yeah. Raise a death adder. Well, it looks, uh, looks good. Can tell that he is using a wireless mouse. Yeah. I don't do that myself. Me uh, I, I've been converted. I, I think that the latency is good enough now, and I just, I can't go back to having a cord attached to the back of my mouse. It's hard for me. Makes sense. Maybe I'll change. Yeah, one day I'd say, <laughs> I, I'd say give it a try. Once you do it for like a month, you're just like, whoa. It's like, He's not switching to a cordless phone or something. You yeah. know, it's like, wait, why would I have a cord on this? <laughs> I can just bring it anywhere. I don't know why you'd bring your mouse into, I don't know, wherever you want to bring it, but I suppose you can do that if it doesn't have a wire on it. If you told Wolf from 10 years ago that Wolf is now in 2023 using a wireless mouse, he would never believe. He'd be like, what? That's sacrilege. <laughs> but, you know. Go to the army in two days. Yeah. Oh, the best choice, it says there, to come watch this game. Yeah. They always say that. Yeah. <laughs> that is the meta. That's the way that you do it. And he is, looks like, off duty. We've got a soldier in the house. Rep in. Is or what it means, but he has three <laughs> lines right there on that patch. That's Triple mid. <laughs> wow. Nah, he's probably a big deal, actually. So, congrats to those who serve and those who have to uh, here, of course, in uh, compulsory military service in Korea. And, uh,. <laughs> Doran's going to get a turn here. It. Looks like that's going to go over. Harold getting dropped here after Outer. They're going to try to heavily commit to get that inner gold. They're set up for this. Yeah. Definitely can try to siege this. The Sedge ult comes out, but the follow-up from the Maokai. Guma just going to cleanse just to be safe. Ult here. Oh, Kiri's going in. Joby. He's just going to be burst oh. out as the roll goes in just to die. As man, that is a very nice setup here from T1, and they're just catching Gen G bit by bit. The mouse issue was As a bait. The, Dorn, yeah, the mouse issue was a bait. Yeah, and because Doran didn't have teleport, there was nothing he could have done about this play. This could just be an early in if they want to commit to it. Um, Freak is is gonna get woken up by this if they actually do kill it post or pre 20. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna actually lose it. But look, it's gonna be a ton of a permanent map control basically for for T1. Um, is they killed it pre-20, Wolf. Yeah, they killed it pre-20. They, they killed it pre-19, man. Um, Maybe because it's the bottom lane. It's bot, and it also, like, yeah, Pays is going to be able to freely farm minions here, but he was also kind of zary and he could do it in mid. But look yeah. at the lack of turrets here. I mean, T1 grab all these turrets. There's no turret outer in mid. There's no bot at all. And this is uh, this is the call to go on to these here. As, like, basic carrier, he sees the angle, and he calls it out. The flash is so beautiful. And... I mean, this is just from the out, uh, the, you know, 
regular perspective here now after Carrier's play, and then Zayas just goes in here and pulls Peanut basically max range. There's nothing Pays can do. He's I haven't lost money. I went series, bro. We can still turn this. We can still turn this around. I can still eat my shake shot. Just coming out of pause with a vengeance. Um, was this whole squad and yeah this is what happens when you go for the loons please let me have my shake shot just gonna get engaged otherwise it's tuna and rice round. again uh so much of the carry potential on the side of tin is just gone is guma gonna pull back some feathers man they are really ripping into them now as the malkai ultimate is gonna come out but easy feather storm now for guma who is oh for fuck's sake now the flank is gonna come in tin they keep Trying to opt into this fight, and they're just getting killed over what and over. What is the ultimate from Chovy? You're old like that. He's just gonna be taken out eventually. Down he will go. Owner takes it and pays for the L. What I mean, a fuck is going on? on. It's, it's Eighteen like zero the, the on the lemmings, uh, you know, on the corpse stuff. Trickle in one by one into T1. Uh, it's not going to be a happy time. Maybe I need to bring out the Porky in solo queue. Going into T1, it's a six thousand gold lead. It's gonna be Baron. And Pays is still just trying oh, to get that second good. item. You're not going to carry this one on Shiv, unfortunately, and without a team, because his team is constantly trying to fight to deny T1 these small objectives when they're so far Hex behind. Hex Drinker, this one is Miramana, Ludens. Most one-sided game yet in this series, it looks like here. As I mean, look at the siege set up here for T1. Carry has decides, okay, they set up the feathers. I'm going to follow up. Like, Guma sets up Karia, and Karia just smashes a home run here. Peanut is dead on arrival. He ends up getting caught arrival. by the Sejuani ult, but he was going to die no matter what. And then Chobi shows up super late here to hit nobody and yeah. just go down. Um, I guess he got that 900 gold shutdown. Eh? No, not he, uh, he did also commit teleport for that play as well, so... Doran, I don't think you win against Guma. <laughs> He's just gonna TP away. As maybe if you root him down. No, he's just gonna bomb a little bit of first strike here. Oh, so maybe goes GA next. Now for Genji. Yeah, I, I feel like this game is just a wash. Like T1 got a slight lead, and then Genji are like, we can fight them mm. 4v5 under our turret, right? And now they it's like the floor was lava. They've just sunk into the lava. T1 have pushed them in. And yeah, I mean again, Chovy has some items, but he is alone. At this uh, point in time. If it's the lava game, I think Genji tripped and broke the coffee table. Yeah. This one, uh... They tipped over the bureau. Yeah. I'm just gonna be angry again. And the thing is, like, the momentum has shifted so massively after that last game where Genji got caught on the Baron play, and I mean, now you're getting crushed. Oh boy. Well, he's gonna avoid the Blade Caller route and get away but that's a okay engage comes in from genji they finally pulled the trigger this is pretty nice but baker is gonna get away and it's guma they can no die get engaged upon of course he is the zaya gets flashed on presses the his fuck is Chobi? and t1 looks like they should stop this first game oh he's oh. gonna get the one kill guma Eats a hit from the soldier as now. Maybe they went a bit too far. Just Teleport Kobe though from Faker. Quite strong with a flash over the divide, and Zero. it will be so enough. Shit. T1 playing with fire. Hey girl. But they do get there in the end. They wiped in G, and they will take down this game number three. And that 18 and a half minute inhibitor's down, so there's super minions on the Nexus. It just absolutely destroyed Genji 22 in this minutes one. stomp. And oh man, I don't know if you can mentally recover from two losses. 22 like minutes that. stomp. A loss, oh, obviously shit. in the second game, but this one, I mean, this was something else. And T1, the crowd is going Ah, uh, yeah, Gigi. With the outplays there Minus with 100. Zayas there in that final. And I think we're going to have a fiery one here that may end this series. We will have to wait and see, but Chill, bro. it just it's feels gonna be, like it's this, be five this series we know continues it is. to deliver in terms of breaking expectations. And uh, yeah. I'm here for it. I feel like both teams kind of have similar drafts where we have this triple threat comp that has been so one draft. strong nowadays because like if we can say what we want about the vein, but like if they go all in onto the cleanse vein that has a brawn with exhaust right in front of her, then Faker's gonna kill you. Or yeah. Zayas is gonna kill you, right? Like they, that's I think both comps are good. Works a lot, so. Uh, similarly, on the I like Chobi. I, I like Genji. I like Genji. I like Genji. I think Chobi is going to be able to Doran's slice and dice the vein. I'm not going to lie. Chobi's going to hit a, a huge Yone ultimate. So I think it is a very similar feel in this one. And uh, as we have seen, the drafts can be what they may. Uh, 
T1 have just been playing the better League of Legends in the last two games at least. And Max. I've been I've been wanting to see this Toby Yone for quite a while. I, I think this is one of his best picks, as e you can see by his win rate, obviously. Q. Um Auto Q. He, he has really just boomed. 84 percent win rate, you're kidding. Um in the past. And Zeus I, I'm fellas. glad that he pulls it out here in an extremely important moment so to important. essentially give it all. It's it's not Sejuani, but Maokai alongside of it. And I think it can have a lot of power in this draft. Yeah. Um, and, and the same comes Braum, true of Doran's I'm not sure if you guys Doran's agree. I think Braum is so he has the most broken yet. sup in the game. I swear to God, it's so broken. With, like earlier in the season, towards the end of round one, where we kind of collectively decided he's back. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> there was a moment where he had a pop off game on GP, and we were all like, okay, well, Doran looks like. Oh, he missed his cues. He's Let's on, go. And he continued to have a, a great Every time season. I verse like, a Braum, I hate my life, I swear to God. We were all very concerned about Doran's individual performances despite Genji picking up the wins. Felt like they were winning despite him, not because of him. And then that changed. But when he play plays the GP, he puts a lot of pressure on in lane. He passively generates income. He becomes a scaling threat. His Stun, shield, really ult, good. disengage. Resident Korean GP Guardian. Here. Just a piece of and shit. And I think that if you around, look at what the composition of T1s is trying to do, it's going to be hard to punish this GP in team fights with the, the Vayne. The damage isn't going to necessarily be there. If you're trying to get on top of him as Jax, like, I think that's your, your better bet. If he gets caught by, for example, a Sejuani ultimate, that could be how he dies Seer. first. Yeah. yeah. Like, there hey, are ways, Chubby, chill. But if he's just left to his own devices, he's going to do a lot, and Vayne can't really... Whenever you look at a mid laner, and he's, like, 20 health, but then he still so has his potion, he's not popping it, you just know they're confident. Twice. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about their health. They'd the rather be low. The Braum just goes right in front. Guma's totally fine. Here's owner. Wave not really in a good spot. So... Uh, it's actually pushing away from Zeus, or uh, rather from Doran, so maybe... If Ona waits here for long enough. enough. As you see, Doran, he's sniffing it out just a bit. He's sitting on two cookies, he's going to eat one now. He can definitely no stay games. here, but he's not going to push it out. He's just going to play very passively, very safely here. Owner's gonna Toby go actually going to give a wave, that's crazy. Baker's like landing very well. GP. All right, they're trying to get on in. He oh. is going to use oh. the apple really early Dude, on. The orange is rather. <laughs> so that's going to be first Didn't blood. only tanked Kicking one as well. Zeus. And it very nicely set Doran could have lived there the as well. He's white He's only going to have to use a flash for either carry. Doran commits flash and still dies. So, I mean, oh, it's really this could be GG, uh, you know worst why? possible scenario here. And he had enough mana, as you mentioned, to use the oranges. But <sighs> it's just too much CC here. And it's the permafrost synergy. You know what? You can hard force it like that, and it's going to work if they have enough damage in this early game. And that is the end of Doran's first life there as Gene is picked up. Obi putting some serious pressure on here in this lane, and this is definitely kind of been one of the consistent points here for Genji is always Mike trying is to get up in this lane. Advantage. I'm not even going to lie to you. pretty good at that, even though it hasn't translated to big wins. Baker Ooh, does unless, take a bunch more. Peanut unless Malachi can flash. Toby, let's see if he can crash this with Q3. Bro, if Maokai flashes over here. As, let's see, there's Peanut, but here's Owner as well. But the let's go, Chobi! Peanut now, no twisted advance, but he is just going to walk this one out. Unfortunately, the Sejuani not doing too much, as Unbound Soul kind of confusingly as Chovy is going to get frozen. Oh, he's chill. Can we just chill for a second? So they get away. Successful. Ooh, early kill uh, onto the Yone, Chobi. This is big. This is what we needed. Chobi set up that Q3. It was really nicely played. And is able to set up the knock up there as Peanut shows up. So went from uh, pick top side here onto Doran. His owner goes over the wall. Sejuani can get you into these positions without committing flash. Doran flashes, but then still caught by Permafrost. Oh, he could There's just too much CC here. If you get caught by that Counter Strike, you've only got one orange to cleanse. And then Peanut comes over here and sets this one Even up. Even if Fake a flash. Trying to hold him into turret aggro, but Chovy actually doesn't pick it up. Very well played. He just still dead. Peanut holds onto it, so Chovy just walks it out there. Baker is going to be able to get the plate. Once like Yone hits level <laughs> 9. But he does pick that one up, so at least Actually, that's no, level 13. Right. Once again, Owner going to oh. flash on in. No flash here available for Doran, and you can't cleanse both of those. Ah. That's another death. What's he doing? What's he doing? Look at the wave. You can't risk that. Yeah, this from T1, they're doing it. Between Zeus and Owner. Oh. Finally, like, they actually got you the... can't the risk that. Duo. And all it took was Guma popping up on Zaya to pull one ban away, and that's all you need. It's fine, and, Trophy I mean, carries. It was, it was a really You've got to nice kill set up and draft and Copium. The Doran angle here on this GP, if he's just shut down early, all those things we're talking about, he's so comfortable on the pick, like he scales, barrel chains, Bro. et cetera, just might not matter at all. You're not passively Bro. getting gold if you're not last hitting those minions with your gun.
Yeah. And uh, this is going to be another wave deleted here completely. A full wave. This Jax oh. is going to be unkillable. <laughs> oh, man. It's just going from bad to worse here for Doran on the top side. At least they were able to set. At least we get Cloud Drag on. Well, this is disastrous. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, this is, uh, again, it's it's why we don't see a lot of Jax, said Juwani. Generally picked up. And remember that Genji got it in game one, actually. And they didn't play around oh. it, you know, amazingly, but they still won the game. Whereas Ooh, this they might get baited. Heavy focus is now trying to follow up on the play. Be, oh, it's huge. Combo. Into the yeah, Gangplank ult. Gangplank's back in there. Wait, is it Faker inting? I swear to God. We're back! We got Chofis Yone, and he's gonna set up this area for success. Oh! Oh! We needed that. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Boys, we needed that so badly. Go die again, Gangplank. Make this game, make this game even harder for me and Chofi, bro. Try us. Oh, this is good. Dude, Yone could not have asked for a better start. He should murder this game now. Thank Christ. It, the Yone Zeri types of compositions when you have this much control feel fantastic. And look at Faker, he's just unfortunately a little bit too far behind the play here. And yeah, Wait, too low on health you, is, but you're to point Big. Here. I mean, yeah, you put up the, the door here as Karia. Braum is good trying Alistair his best to mitigate honestly. some of this. And Faker holds his ult to the last possible second, but it's still caught yeah. by this Malkai cool. ultimate. Such a shit position. You just don't want to be opting into these just fights leave it. here. Into just Zeri, let, them, let those Yone. two die, and then everybody run. Here from T1. Yeah, I did the quiz. And so then Faker, so Empress Divide. Faker yeah, shove mid, Guma shove bot, and the play is not even that bad. And uh, excellent setup from the side of Delight, by the way. I, I know we highlight Jovi's play, but Delight was the one who saw the angle. <laughs> oh man, he is so hyped about this as well. And like, he knows the, it's like GG from that. The angle that it was looking like we might be heading down, like the path we were walking in the series after two deaths on door, and was like, oh man, maybe it's done. You know, this looks pretty doomed, but all it takes is one good team fight like that, and the rest of your comps win conditions are online. Now, Doran is still not relevant in this game, and it's going to be a long time before he ever is, if he is, but yeah. Yeah. at least you've got the other angles. Yeah, he's never going to really be relevant. Oh god, even Kari is here now. They're going to get him to flash. Just... As, yep, once again, only <sighs> Kari getting Zeus ahead. And he's never really going to be Somebody help this man. For sure. I do wonder if he can get to a spot if this game will go long enough now that the rest of the team is doing okay to where Doran at least can, like, hit one barrel, one ult in a team fight, and maybe that's enough. But this is a very big Zeus problem that Doran has right now. Yeah. Barrel is going to land here, and they just going to take an extra turret shot. Peanut was in the vicinity with Flash and ult. And it looked like maybe they wanted to try to come over there and punish Trophy, almost nine and aggressive. Blade of the Rune King. It's going to be huge. He has picked up several plates here. I mean, he is really big. I was going to say, I'd love to see a gold lead uh, graph here. It's 1,200. The no one's going to be able to match. Jax, I, like, Jax is going to try Super and match Toby, but I don't know. And the Zeri. These are the real wing he does conditions have a, He actually Jax is 500 gold ahead. Lots of threats. And Peter, Peter on the player cam is still just loving every minute of this. Remember, it's double elimination. You lose here. It's not like your tournament life is over. You can absolutely still make that run back to the finals, but it's just uh, Chill, a little bit of a shaky plank. series here for Gen.G, and the momentum is not in their favor, but it is in this game. Yeah, and you would have really liked to uh, just win and get a straight ticket to the grand yeah, finals just plus really worlds, nice, right? Like, that's really, really nice. So you don't lose too much, but you also have a lot to gain from actually winning. So yeah. definitely a lot of stakes here for both teams. Essence Reavers picked up for Doran now. So it's the first step to trying to be a champion in this game. Gang playing two and, items, uh, level 13, and you can, doesn't really matter how far behind you are. Obviously, uh, looking for a little bit more money. Jovi should a be bit mythic more here. He's going to sit there under the turret for a little bit longer. Pay is going to grab some. Vayne goes static ship as well. Side. And Genji. Really Interesting. I've seen two Vaynes in my solo queue games, and one of them went advanced. static shiv. Triforce or something, and I think he like one v nine actually. The vein issue in team fights we talked about in the draft, you know, potentially valuable she could or could not be if she snowballs, etc. Not relevant in this early game right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be a, a nothing champ in this smart game. Smart gang so first smart move you've made all like game. The one that Genji just crushed there again, where everybody is set up on the side of T one. Give the tower, so play the strong side, tower, other side of Need to use it in the top lane. Owner shows himself on a ward, but he's like, well. I'm just gonna hold on to this Rift Herald. I mean, I, I, still I, I no mythic. heard already, just my presence here is enough. 
for Doran to have to back off the lane and for Zeus to take an entire turret by himself. First plus turret, all five turret plates. So this guy already you can see 2,000. 2.4 thousand gold ahead as Gen G. They're gonna take an Ocean Drake, but guys, your top lane is is kind of. <laughs> it's kind of in a rough Trophy spot here. It's it. crash on the inner. Yeah, and Trovi's gonna respect this and teleport in. They still get the dragon. So two Drake lead here. It's Chemtech Soul again. So he didn't even get a base TP. It's a straight TP, lead, which means he's holding heaps of gold. Gen G, but he's feeling pretty good about almost everything else. And Trovi, he teleports over there. It's gonna be down teleport Ooh. now for. Uh, <laughs> Okay. He's very far down the lane as the flash yes. comes in. Yes. He's in a lot of trouble. Has like he said. Himself. I don't think he's gonna give it the trophy. Give it the trophy. Give it the trophy. Give it the trophy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of a bunch of soldiers, but that's another kill given over to Chovy, who is three now and Chobie zero goes now side lane. on his Yone. It's reminiscent of game one. That kill on the Faker where he was greeting. You for can't place stop Chovy Yone from here, guys. See how quickly it's unstoppable. Faker like Mike Talia, it's over. A, uh, like leash he gave himself there, obviously to slide I'm back sorry to the into position there to the sand soldier. But this game's over. Let's start looking again. Five. Uh, to lock him down, he knows he's dead, doesn't even flash, and he's greeting super hard. That's another kill going over to Chovy, and it's yeah. a lot of map control. Imagine holding flash as Faker like there, like you, in game one, if you hold so, flash there and you die, uh, like... Again, Doran, not relevant, portable almost. but everyone else so oh, relevant pace. that you start to wonder who's pace. really ahead in this game. And I, I think it's like, do you believe in the side lane condition of this Jax? Do you believe that that's going to get the Vayne and the Azir into a late game win condition? is really what you're asking yourself right now if you're a T1 fan, because the Fed Yone is a big problem, and Doran will eventually still be somewhat relevant later on in the game, and they have great engage. They have a Maokai and a Yone, and they have this Zeri that's also significantly ahead. So Faker here thought he could just dash his way out of this one. Is that the Sand Soldiers to get out to light here, though? Look at that. I mean, I mean I'm not a Faker hater. That's, that's just so a fact, damage. gentlemen. I'm just not talking facts and truths. If he flashes to light's knock up there, maybe he gets out, but... Really tough Blade the Ruin King done on Yone now. Yeah, probably should have flashed. One it, bad fight. Jax that gets that bounty though. He he, he could easily carry. Uh, he could nice be careful. Set up gank there from Gen G. But again, uh, we're in a Monk state a where, as you mentioned, it's it's very unbalanced. Like where your leads are, right? So you got the Yone, you got the Jax. Who is going to be able to play to those win conditions? I think, and who's going to execute better with what they're given Ooh, is careful. really what it's going to come down to, right? We've talked a, a bit about the drafts, but it hasn't always. See if Doran can uh, land his double barrel. Wishing sometimes it's just about who's playing better League of Legends. Nice. Is Doran is trying to match here against Faker, which is pretty okay. Although it's the fine. crown definitely Crack that the crown. right choice Crack here. Crack that crown, Faker, by the way, because oh boy. yeah, yeah, you can get a poke down, but you're going to be denying huge barrels, huge yoni. Nice, is, nice, nice, the nice. Zeri's going to struggle to take that down. Not a lot of range here on the side of Gen G. So you need good choice. Yeah, you need to be able to have really strong engages as the Azir, and the crown is probably just going to guarantee that happens every time. And the follow up on Owner's Ult as well is this Rift Herald fight here. T1 not fully set up. Zayas coming down now, and Chovy's gonna have to go back to that. Zayas could find an angle potentially. He oh could. shit! He's thinking about it. He is going to get knocked oh shit! Chovy, careful. Peanut Ultimate goes Sobe wide. Safe, but five members of T1. Chovy's fine. In the choke. They want to take Chovy's fine. As the smite will go over to owner. The engage now from P uh, from Delight rather is pretty good, but Pays is getting low. And he just gets Chovy. Where's Chovy? Who gets to that back line? But look at Chovy as well. Is doing incredible. Oh, he gets he gets Gumiushi. As the carries are really going one for one. Zayas is not done though. They got to run. T1 on the chase. They have Zayas. They have Faker, who did use his ultimate. And Delight looks like he will have to sacrifice Delight's dead as fuck. Chovy should be able to live though. Chovy should be able to live. Nice. But they're not going to be able to lock down the Yone. Okay, he gets out with the Q3, dashes his way through. Doran here going to get a demolished proc, but isn't going to be able to pick up any gold here. Chovy had to blow flash for that, by the way. Still going to delete some minions away from T1, so that's one good aspect. had to kill there. They need to kill Jax now. Fight here for Genji T1. One, win the fight, grab the Herald, and it was a really nice start off by Zayas. He wraps his way around, and Toby unbinding early. Yeah, they got Herald now for the next play. It's pretty big. Like, oh man, this Jax is going to get him, but Peanut actually outplays it and hits him there with the Bramble Smash. So watch this this passage of play here as Toby unbinds, and then Peanut actually smashes Zayas away. Actually really important here, and then the ult goes off, which keeps T1 at bay. The Paze's ultimate here really hits nobody, and even though he's able to avoid the Emperor's Divide here, Genji is fighting into this choke point where it's literally a fanned out composition of T1, and Gax, Zayas once again gets Gax, into position. Right. And even though Toby's here to do some really big pace. damage, 
There's just not enough damage once Zeri's gone, and yeah. you're, 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 you're still a ranged champion who's relying on your kit. You're not going to have that zero, zero? Are they really? The, um, Give me updated with Aldo. And the Fed Jacks are going to have. Yeah, and Doran, you know, not really a factor yet. He's just kind of pushing mid, not really able to help as, you know, he doesn't quite have that damage in the second the Zeri's gone, as you mentioned, and Yone's just out of the fight. You don't really have any follow-up. So even though Goomba goes down, Faker and Zeyu is able to get the job done. Now, game is still very close, <laughs> you can see here, especially with the Chemtech Soul and, you know, T1 are slightly ahead, and they are going to try to take out this mid-tier one with the Rift Herald. Might just I think it barely gets it, yeah. be able to, yeah, be able to get across the line there. Yeah, so... We can have some more gold here now, trying to maybe set up for this soul point fight. Not again, very critical mm. for this combo. Does Yone have TP? He does. To get it. Jax as well, I guess, you know, if you get that soul. Um, but they don't have any dragons, so they're just getting the individual healing. You could just shove mid here and open it. They're going to just, they're going to choose to fight this. though. Yep. We will have a fight. Both oh, Zook and Zeus flank. Zeus has a mega cone. He's got an angle. I think he's spotted just barely on the end of that. As in he goes, the spite. Sedge got it. From the side of Pina, it goes to T1. Big T1 gets it. How do they fight? Mars here on the side of Gen G is Toby. Toby. Away. Oh. He's not going to be able to follow up on that oh. initial engage. Gen G needed that. Slow down pretty now the vein's going to start hyperscaling. Like they don't want to chase on this fight. Yeah, this gangplank is up for useless. That damage is just too, non-existent. So it's not like Genji backing off here is going to cost them any sort of big objective, but the dragon goes T1's way, and that blast cone engage from Zayas was pretty cool. He also yeah. was able to just narrowly avoid, I believe, the Chobi was piss useless in this fight from Peanut as well. So he gets into the back. What did Chobi do? Ultimately, that's really why this he tried to goes get the so he tried to get the dragon for T1, and, with the big and then he eed. I mean, Delight takes he eat out to dodge and then QR to escape. Jesus fight. Christ! Is not a factor, as you mentioned in the last fight. He's still not a factor in this one either. No, he'll be a factor in like three fights time, bro. Push Genji away, and you're fighting towards the vein. Like that's the cool thing about the vein in this comp. As when Yone is your only fed carry, I mean, you have Zeri obviously, but she's very fragile. You're kind of walking into the low she's range. Very fragile. She's very happy uh, to accept that challenge in fights like yep. this. It's part of the reason why you picked the Vayne in this one. It's, it's such a low range comp from the side of Gen G. You're going to have a lot of targets uh, to chase potentially as what Jovi. is going on here. Jovi miles down the lane, but it doesn't look like Zeus is going to commit mm -hmm. as he doesn't quite have the support mm -hmm. nor the vision. And he doesn't want to throw away his gigantic bounty he's got on his head now that he's 4 and 0. Look at this build from Chovy as well. We've seen even a lot Trout. of different variations of the tank Yone, but the even Trout here he's going to pick up is going to be. Uh, I saw this in my solo game the other day and it pissed me off. I didn't like it at all. Teammates and empowering this area you don't well. see the good one trick Yone is doing this build. You see them doing damage. Utility here. I actually think it's pretty cool. It's reminiscent of the old Sunfire Bork builds we saw on Yone in the past. Yeah. That's what they're trying to like I think, redo. I, I don't know. I might have just preferred him to do damage. Uh, but like you mentioned, it, it kind of does enable the rest of his team and himself even. So uh, definitely an interesting choice. I think I feel like we need like a 10 minute desk segment to really break this down. I but. think in a lot of ways, Valdez, like the way this game has to be won for Genji is extending it so long. And obviously with the soul being such a non-factor in this game, plus their two Drake lead, they're just saying, Okay, Yone is really strong now and really ahead, but that's not going to matter in 10, 12 minutes where the it game could. He might be able to two shot there. So yeah. I want to empower this gangplank and the Zeri later on where they're going to be super relevant. I want to make sure my engages are good. It's basically crown Yone. Uh, <laughs> essentially, it's like what he's saying here, and I, I like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to keep him alive. Try to use that uh, lead to just stay alive, stay relevant, stay doing damage. Who is going to deal with the Jax? He's a bit like of a fucking problem. Better. But either way. Uh, here we go. We got a push in from Gen G, trying to get on top of the Braum now. As oh, you see, Chobi? they can extend pretty far for this one. But uh, big burst. That vein is Chobi anyway. As he's getting some alone time with this top turret, and yeah. should be able to take it out. This is a huge problem. It's not worth it's it, bro. Worse, Mid lane for uh, top lane uh, outer is not worth. Doran, you know, if he gets counter struck, he's dead. In, What's in, in doing? Scenario for the rest Are of they the trying to cheese a so Baron? What are they trying to do? The fact that Zayas could just walk up to these turrets and say goodbye uh, is, is very problematic for map control. Oh, the sapling keeping them around. They want to engage on oh, the, the Jax. Oh, so Can we get the Jax? Can we get the Jax? We're going to get the Jax. We're going to get the Jax. And he lives for an incredibly long amount of time as Jovi can't quite take him. They oh, Jovi gets the Jax bounty. As Jovi will pick up the kills. Oh, 
So you have to commit so much for that. Trovi has TP. Trovi has TP. Trovi has TP. It's the deciding factor. He'll TP instantly back in. And this gangplank do something. Trovi looking for the EQ. EQ misses. Q back. And this is awkward slide. now. Yeah, it gets real this is so awkward. damn awkward. Fake is dead. Braum's dead. Guma is... Guma just being hounded down gets the alive? one kill, but it's a double for the side of his opponent, Pace, who just oh, barely close. not going to hit that, but Guma is pretty due. <laughs> down he goes. There we go. The boys. All right, so the boys are back in town. Several members here. The shutdown we needed that. Onto the jacks and Chovy just got bigger he's like all right i'll go for the ie to finish this one off huge <laughs> building actually picks up picks up the pickaxe and uh you know i uh you can't build ie third you know on this anymore but he's gonna pick up a ton of money and they're gonna get the baron zayas gonna try to come here are they gonna they get the baron attempt to steal yeah and no. burst is coming in oh he's gonna charge over and he's not able to avoid oh he flashes jeez oh. that was close Got in with like a thousand health. Shield, bro. It. That's Flash now down and Gen G in control of this game. Yeah, they're in control of this game. Chilly picked up a ton of money. Like I said, realize what he builds third year. He's going to do a ton more damage with the gold he picked up. This fight was so awkward. Zayas. So Zayas how, did, how, did, how did Zayas tank for 20 minutes and his team do nothing? Gangplank Maokai will just zone them all. Don't really have Legi any like, legitimately, it just did. Like, Guma's not on top of this, so Zayas is locking yeah. down these champions and trying to do damage on his own. There's no carrier. Once he's dead, it's really tough to fight it out. And Faker doesn't get a ton of value with his Emperor's Divide here. Doran's sitting on the side, then Delight comes in, takes Faker out of the equation, and then it's a dead Braum. Bane can't do anything here, 1v4. And Trovi, I mean, he is... He's Spain pretty is big like in this game, even though he went for a utility build. Now the game is getting longer, they're getting a lot of money. Doran's starting to become more and more relevant as well. A little bit concerned here for what T1 is going to do. All of the eggs in the Jack's basket, and it looks like it might have yeah. just dropped to the floor. And the other baskets, you look at Baker, and you look at the Vayne Guma, like those baskets are all right, but they don't quite There we go. The dragon. The it's looking good. Looking way better. You know, even the Zeri and the GP at this point, who picked up the Navori Quick Blades, and you give enough time to this Genji. Maybe looking like a Shake Shack angle, gentlemen. The sheer amount of damage that they have, the amount of AoE damage as well, is pretty insane, and, and target acquisition as well. So, yeah, I mean, the Randwins here for Pina just is so fantastic. I feel like into what T1 are running. They've got to get on top of you, and it's going to really hurt the Jax's power. It's basically an anti Jax item in this uh, particular case, as it is the. Nice, um, nice, nice. Shield bow, he does complete here third. This, this build really threw Can me Yone early, build? I apologize to everyone. Blade, uh, even shroud, shield bow. I don't know how they win this now as T1 without a really clutch multi-man stun or big emperor's divide. Because there's just too many threats. And even Doran is becoming a threat. He's a whole item behind, but he's still GP. He still does a bunch it's of like damage. It's like utility Yone build, fights. really. Yeah. And he outranges you. If he could set up those barrel chains, when you have this much map control, guess what? <laughs> you know, you're going to have those barrels down. Yeah. No. It, it isn't as bad as it seems, but it's like Jace. definitely playing pretty low he, test. Just the one threat with team. they have. He gets Zonia's third, and Genji How much you bet? ignoring him. They have the Baron buff. 100. They go top. I win $60, and I'm going to go buy a Shake Shack right if I win. Here. There's no tanks with this at all. It's just Jovi, Doran, and Paze. Moving forward, taking a turret as T1 cannot match this. Not without Zeus, not without the whole team being there, basically. Careful now, slowly, slowly, more slowly. More value to fill the coffers of the GP who looks to be going collector next, the Yone. No, it's on the whole series. It's going to have a lot of doing game by game. A lot, a lot of tankiness that. in this one. Yeah. The Jax can buy T1 a lot of time here, and the Baron has now run out. So they haven't lost any inhibitors, so no permanent base damage done here by Gen.G. You see that swing of gold in those last two fights really spiking here for Gen.G. Looks like Doran will not be able to stop this back here, but he actually yeah, nice. slurks. But Gangplank has a level he lead now, Jesus. He's a bit of a lurker, but we no, he's do fine. have Pays he's fine. down here, and Peanut is here, but Zeus just... They are still not showing. They cannot kill. They, this won't work. This will not work. Peanut Watch is this. going to come on down with the TP. It's not going to work. Is in position. Now Doran's just going to have to flash. We got TP coming in here from Jovi. As he's like, oh, God, get me out of here. I didn't want to. Get the fuck out. I didn't ask for any of this. Is Peanut just going to dab his way Really? Out. 
Uh, very, very strange exchange down here on the bottom side, but Deus, just by standing in a brush, actually gets T1 into a pretty nice spot here on the bottom side of the map. Get the Yone ult out, get Doran's flash out. You can see that, you know, Doran's actually a level up, actually, with all the time he's been given in this game, as well as all the, the kills he picked up. Like, he's picked up a decent amount of experience, right, despite being so far behind in the early game. So it took Zayus a while to actually get on top of him and, and like really threaten to kill him. But ultimately, because he had a lot of friends there, Doran has to flash out. So big win here from Zayus just by the lurk and the commitment there. As Genji, 12 kills to buy, 5,000 gold still ahead in this game. Absolutely. And have Gangplank a very scout, strong, he's fine now. Well rounded composition. But if one miracle counter strike goes off in one of these fights, or Baker has a really great effort as a fighter, somebody gets picked by owner setting up an ult. I think this game is still winnable for T1, and that's the one thing that T1 has been, I think, so much more than really any other team in our playoffs so far is clutch in situations clutch. like this. And 1.1k uh, barrels. If they taught me anything after I predicted them to lose 3-0 to, to T1, is just <laughs> do not count them out even when the situation looks dire as it does in this game, because right now it feels very doomed. Yeah. Definitely the dark horse of these playoffs now turned into potentially the strongest team, but let's see if Genji can pilot uh, this lead that they have in this game. Not a lot of action in the current state because T1 from behind, they don't really want to force anything. And Genji from ahead, they know they scale incredibly with GP and Zeri and even the Yone. So they're just kind of sitting, resting on their laurels for now. But I think once this Baron does spawn, we will be fighting over that. The Chemtech Soul, you know, maybe Genji can Chemtech Soul's gone trash. Just go, for, just, just go for Baz and End, I think. Heavily into that if the Baron is available. Yeah, no. It, don't think Chemtech so. is the one soul Zayas I would just... For a flank, knows where he is around this Baron over it every time. There's no vision for Genji whatsoever. Like, they have not done their due diligence about that. Just in case yeah. you trade the Baron, then they get one pick and, and they end the game. Really Vayne has IE with his build. Big engage angle if he's just left his own device. He's going to get a red buff while he's waiting as well. As Baron's coming up, and the problem is with Zayas here on this Lurk is if they don't go for the Drake, which they probably won't even though they're closer to it, he's not going to get much out of it. All right, on Mountain Soul down. Zeus still lurking. They're just going straight towards the Drake, too. His uh, weight is going to pay off. Another lurk from the Jax. Uh-oh. Pays in trouble, and he is going to cleanse. They get the cleanse as now Zeus goes into his stopwatch. Collecting Here's Chovy. Here. <laughs> Taking a huge amount is the Jax, and he will go down through the Counter-Strike, and now Pays has the front line. The engage from Delight is insane. Vayne in Season like 13. Will absorb the pressure Imagine and thinking you're that guy. You know that guy, Guma. No one's that guy. Champions useless. Push down and bring us to silver screen. It was a Don't try that old age with the new age. You always lose out. Pays is a okay, and they are going to be able to win that longer fight. And we go to game, game five, the gentlemen. Resources they were given everything we wanted to see from this team. The Jacks, the Sejuani. They had an early lead, but everything else going so wrong. In those, those early game fights where Chobi got ahead, is just ultimately too much here for T1. And it looks like, again, we are going to Silver Scrapes here. Valis Silver Scrapes! In a T1 series. It's two games apiece. This is the this final deciding game. So much in draft. It was not punished this time by Genji. And, oh, late invade? You know, we're, we're in a situation where Genji strike back in that fourth game. You know, where they have some really close plays from Chobi early Doran. Okay falls behind but he's still able to stay it's relevant. Their own, it's their own jungle fights. I'm trolling. And it's just uh, you can't ask for a crazier story than this. I mean the fact that T1 is even here in the first place was something nobody predicted. Nobody saw it coming. I saw it coming. Yeah. And here here we are. Yeah and I, I do think that uh, again KT didn't play their best best of five. Genji had some stumbles here but at least Doran is on uh, Cassante this game and not the gang blink. For the run they at least he can't in top to lane right? Nobody really expecting it. Despair? They have defied oh, those off. expectations. Chill. So let's see if they can take the final step, or will Gen G, the expected victor in this one, take it down? Although, of He's course, winning, over the Gen last G. four games, expectations have changed wildly back and forth. Pays and Doran into <laughs> so Doran hard late, late game, it's honestly. Pick that's hard to, to and the game before. Up. And normally, we don't, we aren't huge fans this of this game. Surely really they'll let Trophy just chill and carry. In team fights, but with an Aphelios cop. And a lot of setup with the Yone and the Maokai. It feels really good here, actually. You can follow up on engage with your Q3. You have a lot of space. You have a lot of time to careful, stack those up. Get careful, on top of careful, some of these careful, targets. Careful. You can peel really well for the engage. So 
the Cassante actually does feel oh, like... Oh, that is such a good ward! Yeah. Excited about. So, oh, Faker again. Yeah, the timing of this is perfect from Peanut as the flash... Ah! Take Peanut all the way underneath the turret with ah! the as he takes two turret shots. Careful. And Owner's just doing the blue <laughs> while this is all happening. Here's yeah, the thing about when Trovi plays mid. With the, uh, the his jungler root, comes mid, flash or flash, and then Trovi takes over. Does, he pushes his advantages and then just when is it my turn for my jungler to do that for me? As I it's called it. here, colloquially, oh, in, the in trouble. Back to his turret and flashes, and that pulls Peanut into uh, too much turret aggro before Chovy can layer that damage on top. And so, yeah, Baker loses flash here. Ah, uh, I don't well. know if we want to fight this. Uh, big rotation over. Now, this is Poppy. I don't think that Chovy alone can really deal with double. Ah, uh, 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 Chovy, no! How? First one, and Chovy not respecting the Poppy and not respecting that first roam. From the bottom lane. Oh, got a nice lead. In the crowd as well. I mean, the environment that we are casting this in, in this room with some of the most passionate fans in East Man, on like... both sides. Uh, you could just feel the tension as owners could have smite this one away. <gasps> Great start here it's for It's over for me. Baker handles the pressure from Peanut. He's down a flash. Then Yone gets caught. Now Chovy also down both summoners. It's going to be a little bit tougher for him to put the pressure on he wants here in this lane against Faker. See if yeah. Peanut gets punished again. Peanut doesn't get to jungle. I mean, owner, he can just sit in front of him, take his camps, smite them away, and he's ahead by three camps already. And one of them including uh, the blue buff of Peanut. So, Poppy's Peanut very far behind uh, to try to flash onto like, Azir. Like, take the flash and that's yeah. be it. You Poppy's don't need to go and invade early Poppy. Game has been so Poppy has late, like, season. I mean, and, you know, owner very rightfully criticized a lot this, this season, but also this series for some shaky performances, the Kha'Zix especially coming to mind. We but won mid, and then we decided we Poppy. wanted to give it back. He knows exactly how to play like this contesting like wolves or something. It's so crazy, bro. Peanut does too, but he's just going to be the one who's on the wrong side of it this time around. Finds himself now significantly behind in farm, as you mentioned. And owner's just going to constantly continue to put this pressure on here. The Jacks yeah. having prio topside as well means owner has run of it's the It's so crazy. And you know that Peanut knows immediately. Peanut can't hit level four. I mean, he. We need level four. Look at Ona. Jungle. And we should go enemy chickens here now because they already got the win in mid. There's no prial for Gen G. So, can you please can win a smite? Nice joining. level four. Smite goes the way of Peanut. But Kerry is here. The health bar of Doran. You know, it's they're fine. Threatening. It's fine. 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 It's Wants to pick up another POG. Doesn't look like Faker. Trovi, we can't give this mid wave. We cannot time. give this Faker mid wave. Do not with give Amptome it. here, just putting a little bit of pressure on with his Sand Soldiers, actually is able to poke Chovy out of lane. Chovy doesn't have teleport, so that should be a plate potentially oh. here. The. <laughs> this Blanking is... Alistair. Yeah, this is a very. Oh, long stun? Blank. Immediate cleanse comes out, and they're going to. That's be okay. okay cleanse. With that. As Delight. Good look by he Delight. Flash, but. You know, Guma flashes away. They don't have vision in the river. Yeah. They don't know what's Just coming the there. Cleanse, and Terry was on the way. So they get the flash out of Guma anyway for that big roam from Delight. Peanut came to mid to try to push Faker out, but it looks like he's going to stay here and does have a ton of mana with the Dorn's ring. So actually going to be fine here. Chovy hits six. Faker does not complete the plate, gets about two thirds of it here, but uh, is sitting on a pretty hefty gold lead now after. That last exchange between the two of Tilda's them. Tilda's going penalties? Damn. And you can see the gold lead here for Pays is all that uh, they're really sitting on right now as Genji. It's still the early game, still not a whole lot of action. It's not like this is a massive lead for T1, but doing pretty good about this. The laning phase here for Pays going swimmingly up a level. Swimmingly. Hey, going Parker swimmingly. Down here. I don't think they'll commit. Yeah, I don't really need to. Um, you still have Pryo in mid. Faker's going to have his flash up first as well. So I think they can just start this up pretty It's easily. recoverable. Trust Note me, that, it's uh, recoverable. Can win. Going to be going for we just need T1 builds. to make or he has a, a catastrophic or mistake. This is, We've you know, all seen it happen. Zero, it can Jax, happen. Poppy on his team. Um, the AP Kaisa has been very strong, but we've seen the AD Kaisa coming back in in certain compositions like this. I haven't been the biggest fan of it, but it kind of makes sense compositionally. Yeah. Yeah, and compositionally. They don't really need to rely on poke in this draft anymore since there's no answer from Genji. Oh, a little push and. What? Can you uh, deny the Yone snapback with the poppy thing? I don't think you can, right? Can, uh. 
go back to your, your send your soul back to where it was bound very easily into this and that's exactly what Shogi does so now he has ult advantage here in mid see if they can turn it chill into anything here. the red buff chill the, the red early. buff the herald is going to spawn 15 and Hurry this up is the delight. Kind of you know peanut could hit six that you absolutely can team fight very well with but owner trying to steal away this buff would actually give him six he's not able to do so so we kind of an awkward spot. Nice touch there on the stun. Otherwise, could have been some danger. Although Faker does not have his ult, so that's yeah, going to get away. And big rotation up towards that Rift Herald. Big committal from both sides, but nobody has actually gone for it just yet. I love this game from Owner. How he is doing what Peanut has done to many, so many times, including him, and in very critical yeah. best of fives and taking the advantages, pushing the the jungle lead, not overextending though. He was measured in how he went over and contested that red ball. There's such a fine and, line uh, for these junglers not to game really well actually, and you love to see the growth of this player who I think. You know, was known for mechanics only early on in his career, but has really turned that around. And his poppy has always been very strong. The pop stuff. Area over here. Gonna We're going red for out. red. Jesus, says, peanut okay, chill. We'll play vertical. We'll play vertical. From Faker, he's in position, reading the play. Ooh. Ooh. Now, Karia could try to make a play Ooh. himself, but full summoners on the bottom side and doesn't quite pan out. Maybe expecting more of a heavy dive in from Genji. But Peanut's just uh, stealing away the red. Actually, finally fine. getting some revenge of his own. Yeah, Faker also Faker not gonna miss a wave. Well, a little bit like a hurt his couple, make a play there. couple minions. And Poppy into Yone, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Peanut can eat the Yone, Yone Yone chickens. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, he <laughs> smited it. Yeah. Well, Peanut's getting pretty deep for this one. He does have a, a big oh. backing here, four members of Genji. But there's no Drake to really fight Zeus for. Zeus with the proxy. Meanwhile, owner did pick up the Rift Herald and. Just uh, farming his own jungle. Doesn't really care about his opponent at this point. Yep. Is trying to Pretty massive lead here but T1 we'll early. It doesn't seem like it, but uh, it is. Proxy off and we'll be able to reset. So he's not going to be in any danger as he tries to put the pressure on this Cassante a little bit further. And you see Faker in mid here. The lane is completely reset. I mean, it's a very close game. Slow, be careful slow. here trying to play Let with Let come Alistair. into the they game, please. Level yeah. six here first for Delight. Generally, don't play with the uh, the bulls. No, they're pretty aggressive, especially delights Alistair. <laughs> and he took the red chroma on the Kaiser. Yeah. Humans got flash cleanse. <laughs> I just don't know uh, how don't this. Do as now we get a little bit I just don't know how this is gonna work. Three in the Chad, is this gonna work? Dive is coming in, but it is very lackluster. Delight nearly dies, and a very rolling dive does not work out here on Taguma and Carry. Got cleanse and yeah. ignite. That's Order's it. Order's over here. Is but now Oda comes back. And they should be able to get <gasps> out. It's over here. Nice little push Ooh. all out under the turret. Ooh. The counter strike. Doron. That's Doran massive. Gets flash off Jax. So, big. Uh, top gap. Some distance. And Zayus will be okay, but does have to flash. Yeah, flashing just doesn't want to take another turret shot there. Harold going to get drop bottom after Delight loses most of his health here. So just not going to be able to stick around. Peanut Whatever. stays here. And uh, is going to look to try to slow this, but it will charge. Plate oh. gold does go over to Guma. Nicely executed here by T1. Not going to over-index into this. Just want to make sure they can get some additional gold into this Kai'Sa. Joby didn't yes. get a snowball this he game like he did last game, here, game guys. Joby, a teleport back into lane. It's going to be a plate Way though. weaker. Yeah. I was going to say he's going to greed for this plate, but actually extremely safe. Had owner right next to him. Had to uh, flash Emperor's Divide. He's not fully safe. Yes, Soldier ten. in position. Even with Delight on the roam. I, I feel for Delight in this one, especially after the early game, he's like looking for any angle he can find. He's like trying to go mid, he's trying to go even up to the Rift Herald. He's trying to like be in the enemy jungle, trying to go for dives, but nothing really working for him so far. Yeah. To uh, Drake lead would be fantastic for T1 rush. with the already great damage. start they have. See if they can wrestle enough on a uh, Pryo here in mid to actually start this one up. Faker is going to rotate over after clearing that wave. And if Genji give this one up, we'll see what the soul is going to be. We've had a lot of chemtechs in this one, so not 100% sure what we're going <laughs> to get. Might be one more, and Genji will um, be thanking uh, Ox, I suppose, for, for that one if it does come to pass. But... See this group up here now. Faker getting mid prio, and it looks like owner's just going to start this one up. Genji not looking confident to contest here. And Faker, Bro, I mean, we have to contest the dragon here, soon. Up plate gold, having that prio when it matters now as Peanut's coming over very late. 
Yeah. And as Gen G, if you're going to make a play for this, you really need to lay some of the groundwork first. I mean, there's not nice. a lot of vision control. You lost the Scuttle Crab. They do have their Aphelios in a pretty good spot, but their mid lane is in tatters. Like, Faker is just sitting there hitting it. As meanwhile, with a big zoom out, Guma still on the bottom side. And they Gen secure G, this dragon. It's going to make life so much easier. Okay, here comes Carrier. He has level six. I'm going to try to go for it, but Delight, he's playing nice. Alistair and Aurel. He's just marking him the whole way. His owner going to keep his verdict. <coughs> really oh, no avail. Like, nothing happens. And it's another Chemtech Soul. Yeah, another one. Chemtech so, Soul. I guess they just knew. They just knew. <laughs> you can have this one. It's not going to matter in the end. And Faker's going to get played nice. golden mid. Um, they absolutely did not know, but this will work out pretty decently for them. It's a kind of trade of fire and mountain here. Infernal versus the Mountain Drake is going to kind of neutralize each other to a certain extent yeah, here the in these the compositions. The and uh, at the end of Trovi the day, needs you know, to find a lead Soul, somehow against this. Not be at the Dragon Pit that much anymore. And, you know, a few more of those T1 moments where they just let it go. Is Baker's has put so much pressure on mid. He actually forced Chovy to lose two waves. And as you mentioned, you know, he just had such a great yeah. sense of. How to put that pressure on mid and, and oh, you really could solo here. On Here's you could, you could kill, you could kill. What? Yeah, Zay's Jax has no flash. Play at what? the end of the day, or is, is he? Oh, he's, he's just going to face check instead into Gen G. Now there's not a lot of damage. Yes, Cassante, can we get a little bit of help? And owners trying to help out, but he gets knocked away as the double Q3 does come in from the Cassante. Oh, the puppy stopped it again as Paige makes his way in and collects yes, the Paige kill. eats it. As it was four on one at the very end. Well, this is pretty huge for Gen G, and I really like the way Kill they going use to pays the CC massive. there, making sure they get the maximum duration of each and every one of those to stop the Jacks from getting out of there. Counter Strike pretty strong, but not strong enough. Tries to turn yeah, on the CC in the end seconds, in uh... desperation, but didn't have flash there either. So ultimately, is going to get taken out. Pays picks up some additional gold. He's got 350 from plates and is going to be taking out this turret I here. I think Kassante like can hold this. I don't know. Game, we'll go to Gen G. And he needs another wave to get the last one. need to be a so little bit actually... careful here, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're going to group up for this one. RT1 looks like. Just give it, bro. Chill. Just barely going to get it here ahead of the side of Gen G. Some waves being lost in a big way in top and bot, though, uh, yeah. from T1. So still a very even game. Like, look at the gold. It just uh, matched up equally at that exact moment. So Dead Gen even. G certainly back in this one. And it's, I don't know. I mean, this could go really any way from here. I mean, this is exactly what we expected from this game when we saw the draft. Just such a close game we're probably going to have. And with Chemtech Soul, I think it's going to continue to be no, that way. Now, okay, The timing of this ult. Ali. Well, the place is really Knock good. up. They see the rotation over. Ali over, again. They get more out of this. If they try to continue to fight, Hayes gets the kill. They can actually half move for that as well. He should have been shoving mid. Allows owner to get away. But yeah, I mean, it's a very close game here. Just a few hundred gold between these two now. And I mean, looking at where the gold is too, you know, it's Aurel who picks it up for T1 in that last play, but Hayes is the one who got the I mean, gold. Guys, Chovy yeah, needs so his blade room gold here to Genji despite a slight gold He's deficit. He's so useless right now. The Aphelios gank, too strong uh, in the top side. Genji, uh, they also got so much money uh, out of those turrets. They deleted minions. Map play pretty good from them in this last game. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, okay, we have a little bit of a setup in mid, but nothing really doing at this point. NG should 4-2. Might just be a little bit of a slow mid 4-2? What do you mean 4-2? because of that Chemtech soul. I mean, Chovy's just parked himself in the bottom side. Looks like Karia wants to try oh, to get Chovy. to ahead. As let's see how this one does go. But the ult is buffered. Chovy gets out, and he will be okay. And now that means that Gen.G seeing Carrier down there can threaten here. Shove mid, get right Herald, now. drop tower. But you can use Herald, drop mid. mid. The ultimate here as well as pushing him away. It feels really nice to to grab a turret and get some As long as I get a clean Herald, it's fine. to get Jack's money is a success, even if it isn't Jovi a Blade the wrong King completed. We'll also get his teleport as he comes to your top side to deal with Faker's push. And we'll be able to get the Rift Herald, as you were mentioning. But it is a successful gank there by Carrier. Yeah, and that's going to be the trade-off here as this game just continues to be. Hey, 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 chill on that blue buff now. Going ahead now further in gold with that oh, kill the bottom on. side turret. <laughs> He's too He's smart. Players. He can Fine, burst it better than you. Like Idiot. Sorry, in game. Actually, very nice for a Jax to have that. Shouldn't be doing that, but. And yeah, I feel, I feel like he'll be able to do a little bit more on blue side. Like you're not going to steal the blue from the Jax. I'm sorry. Split push. We'll see, he bursts though, at like 600. You have nothing. He'll be able to get. He's not going to be 4-0 in this game. 
as he is currently 0 and 1. The Jacks still eventually, as long as the game doesn't get too out of hand, should have a lot of power as this game comes along, but yep, yep. just have to wait and see yep. how this mid game goes. Playing Jacks into Maokai as well is kind of tough in terms of side laning because it's really easy for the Maokai to impact those sides. This Aphelios is going to be very, so very strong if untouched. Threat, but it's not going to necessarily be big uh, if though. Very soon here with the state of his uh, big game, as you mentioned, the lack of items. But it's only 18 minutes in. This next Drake fight is kind of an awkward one because neither team wants to to toss your chance at Worlds away for a Chemtech Dragon, you know? <laughs> uh, as this is going to be a slow setup here. And hey, do you think Chovy's going to build Even Shroud again? I hope not. <laughs> I don't think it makes sense in this case. Yeah, I... He I has a Ruby Crystal. Way, but, you know, it'll make him tanky. There's still triple What could that Ruby Crystal be full, bro? Let's see what he decides to do. Maybe it's Sunfire this time. Uh, as Gen T and T1, they are throwing it down. Wait, where's Chobi? He's so, he's so late. Chobi's so late he's to this fight. He's going to be watching that position. He's got red white here. Chobi coming in for flash engage potentially. Well, that's the Chobi's helicopter. Here? Not going to hit anyone. Not? Is mark. They're just trying to turn on to him. They don't care about the Drake. They just want to take down the Jax. As Doran is in there, he just dies for free. Both top laners. As now Fina just going to Chobi gets a huge ult. Faker gets a huge ult. Base is not an effect. Baker will not get away. Oh, let's go! Look at those goddamn guns. Beautiful. Really shutting down the doubters on this one. Scrap! Positioning was good. Oh yeah! Dies trying to assassinate him in the back line. Goes in deep. Dias greased it. He went way too deep. It's not a AP Kaisa game where you could just poke your way into these objectives. You have to. Philos got exactly what he wanted, bro. They did not, and he just exactly what he wanted. Now he's got Perfect guns. Jax on the fucking, like, on, off of, in the, man, I don't know, Narnia. The lead was pretty he did what he wants. Before this, but now, 3,000 gold the advantage for Genji. Is look at Paze's positioning. Poppy Copter here, not great. Zayas goes in by himself. So Zayas tries to kill Paze, but it's just the rest of the team down. infinite. All the way here at the CC line. drops so Hourglass. Yes, Doran will die, but he does a lot more here to buy space. Three men, Philly Assault. Red, white. <laughs> look at him go. He's Gale Force. Flash for Guma. <laughs> Rookie of the year says, I'm going that's to the finals it, again. It, I got it, MVP it. last time. And this man is just out of control. And it's, it's always the positioning, <laughs> Valdez. The positioning of this man. Yeah. No vision doesn't care. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's nothing else to say. I mean, just Caliber. wait for the perfect moment. Yeah, and there's it is. To finish it off. Alistair <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> oh, man, they are really feeling it in this fifth game. The light's getting so hyped, man. I love the I love when gamers game. get hyped in the games and, and show a little bit of emotion, yeah, you know? It's very cool. It's a real sport, by the way. Real sport. Up from that last fight. Nice. And, uh, you know, I mean, Even Shroud completed. Big, if he's going to do this much. Who can blame him? Yeah, and, uh, I mean, if you just remove every single threat, like the Jax goes away and everybody else is held down by Maokai Ultimate and Delight groups up three to knock them all up for Peace to knock them down. You're not going to lose. You're not going to lose if your team can do that. I can tell you that oh right my now. god, it's a Baron rush. Wait, I'm a little bit nervous. This is the only way we throw the game. On the Baron, a little bit slow, but the Maokai Ultimate might be enough. He's texting in order. Oh. Peanut gets it. Huge zero. Gets absolutely no one. Pays goes down. But it doesn't matter. Doran should clutch. Vamos. To the side of Gen -G. Double ace oh, man, Gen -G and a Baron. The Baron. They had good positioning and they wanted to go in and hard force that. T1, it's looking like a shake jack angle. The turn is amazing for Gen -G. Daddy getting you paid. You into this. You could have just said, well, they get Baron. It's a really tough Ooh situation. Wee. But, you know, maybe we can win the game. Maybe went from the bad to worse for T1. You know, they completely, later on. they completely just walked into that. They killed the AD carry, but it worked for us. like, was never, ever going to work for T1. Even with the setup that Baker was looking for there with the Emperor's Divide, with Rel Magnet Storm and a Counter-Strike. 
The follow-up is just insane from Chovy as he turns here through the Maokai ultimate. And Delay's job, already Chosta. got the spike disjointed. And by the time you have to go in here as T1, it's too late. Bad now, I mean, the Magnus put from a little Karia deeper. hits everybody, and there's a decent amount of damage coming through from Zayas. But it's a still it's still a Kaisa comp, and you don't have enough damage at the stage when you're behind to actually follow up on those big engages and the turnaround with Peanut. With Toby is enough. He won drop to the lower bracket. Yeah, they still they still can easily make worlds. Gen G just go to straight to and grand that final. That is going to be the Baron. Eleven <laughs> yes, kills to three. <laughs> GA at 22 minutes. Yeah. And a crit cloak. Just just as a bonus, you know. Like, <laughs> One control ward as yeah. well. I love GAs sure. in situations got, got like this. Score. He's done it's else. like control ward you're so far ahead, and the only way they win is that they kill you. But then you buy a GA, and then just makes it like, what do you do? You kill them twice, the game fight's over. It's just it's such a good scenario to get ahead of your opponent. What's he holding? That's right, 32, because he spent all that money. <laughs> yeah. And Genji in such a good position here in this final game. I mean, it, it's it's going to take a miracle for T1 to come back now. Yeah, especially because like you very nice. Crown Azir like the, the into Maokai, Kasante, like ran Alistair. Away ran away with it fast because yeah. T1 went for a very desperate re-engage. They said, You'd well, really be doing Baron, that damage, lose. my friend. So they went in and lost the fight anyway, right? They weren't ready to fight, and they definitely were not set up for it. So now the Baron power play is massive for Gen G. They're six thousand ahead, and they want more than six thousand. Well, they, they should get double in hits. They want, they want the LCK finals, and they may just be getting it, Valdez. I mean, at this point. It is just hard to imagine a world where they don't walk out the victors of this one. Pushing now this bottom inhibitor. Bit of damage coming in onto Tor, and he's going pretty deep for this one. Don't Ooh, necessarily trying. have to do that. The space is like, man, I just want to hit the inhibitor. Please just, <laughs> just calm down, bro. Like, just let me hit this objective. Thank you. And that he will, but the pop Wait, comes out. Can we get the inhibitor, guys? Come on, we'll back in. the inhibitor from going down for now. Yeah, Baron's off. Although, Baron wears off, but they have enough. Is. Yeah, they have enough. Valdez. It is now we'll dragging and reset. Genji with a 6,000 gold lead, as you mentioned, 6,500 really here at the end of this uh, when you, you put all the calculations in. Baker finally gets a second item. And that Baron fight, you know, if, if they had two items on the Azir before, really, bro? if you had a little bit more layered damage, if, the, if there was some sort of AoE, like a rumble or something on top of an engage like that, you know, maybe you, you win those fights, right? In the choke point carry, he goes in, it's a big magnet storm. They're just so so desperate and and so confident it seems that they could actually still win this fight but it's it's just one of those those fights that t1 fans are going to be seeing in the nightmares even if they somehow miraculously <laughs> win this one because yeah it's just it was so hard forced and it's, everything about this game was so good until that moment you know yeah also it's just glory days for for pace fans right we were like waiting throughout this entire playoffs even against how lap sports were like man uh, you know, I thought Pays like rookie of the year. This guy's so good. He's not showing his true self, and finally it pays off. And you know what? Like the rest of the team is enabling him in a great way, but he's right there to to smack it down and really bring it home. So picks out the Aphelios. Let's go. Let's five. do a full one. It, Trophy you know, mid, I, full I top fast. Until I saw that one team fight, and I'm like, okay. Also played it in game one. Gonna look to get two wins on it tonight. Now the game isn't over, but so it, over. It, it's pretty. Pays controlled and Genji controlled right now, let's say. Yeah, bottom inhibitor is the one that's Look at down. the macro they play. Choby is sent to kill and, and bot side camps. The side of the map he's trying to get he's trying to get a shield bow done. For Genji, so that's really frustrating. And then let's go and get blue side inhibitor. control. He has TP. I wonder if he TP's midway here. To push down to make sure they can set up for another Baron fight win. And at oh, least they if play so get that same slow. Sort of combo this time they just around, don't even care about the tempo. To follow up with They're gonna it, play for the Baron uh, setup to end they it. They do end up opting into that type of fight, obviously. That's literally they're and, literally just gonna play for the Baron. You know, there's no real teleport to end situation here for Genji. Like they're running they maximize Kasane. items. I mean, Chobi will fix spot. He'll TP across. Quickly, but it's not Baron like top lane mid lane siege slowly suck out a win. It's not that type of situation. The Jax is on your side, but it still just feels so dire here. Yeah, it absolutely does. And ah. This uh, this Chovy even shroud. Uh, we talked about it in game Wait, four. Wait, Jax gets to shove bot through. Great for the they team. don't have like bot lane really, pressure point. Jax has uh, TP to cut across. Everybody to do extra damage. Now it feels really smart. In game four, we were like, uh, not sure. In this one, it's like, well, you got a massively fe uh, fed. We top lane, nice. Pays, right? So just kind of get in there. Also gives you the extra resistances on all the legendary items. So you're really tanky. You're doing a lot of damage. You have. Nice amount of lifesteal. You can always go in to enable the rest of the, your team. 
And uh, we also got Pays almost about to hit his LDR. Like, it's pretty insane. As Zeus here, 0 and 3, he's really trying to bring this game back somehow. He has TP. Okay, carry Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, That's the two men. Blocked uh -oh. by the Poppy. He does get stunned up there towards the end. And unfortunately, the follow up a little bit slow. From the side no, of Yone, team, Yone ult for the Baron. Still up and available. Feels pretty decent for T1, though, that they get the Yone ult like, what, 40 seconds cooldown, man? You know, Zayas pushed the bottom wave so far that it's not really going to be threatening anything. He can actually just walk towards the Baron now. And Toby has his choke point controlled here. Look at the lack of vision for T1. Walking into this one is mm. way easier said than done. You just have no yeah. real entry point here. Zayas is going to try to set up that flank. He's over on blue. Oh. <laughs> Toby, chill. Toby. He's like, hello. All the way from blue buff. He could have died there. Yeah. But <laughs> they haven't started the Baron yet. T1 get one more fight. They get one more shot at this. Yeah. Pina holding the choke. Just uh, trying to make sure they do not get... All they have to do is wait for bot lane supers. You could potentially burn down the Baron. Wait, 37 Pays, seconds for bot lane supers there, to hit the base. The Baron is like threefold, right? So if Pays is ever on vision, probably Top not Top lane wave, bot lane wave. If you fight, if you baron, fight here, you just give them what they want. Vision, T1 begin to push in, they if you fight here, you give them what they want. And they just have a wait. big bottom lane problem. 20 more yeah. seconds. Th I mean, this is starting to stack up now. Like, Zayas did his due diligence to push it out earlier, but yep. I love how Genji just delay. They let the minions just do wait. the work. They let the minions do the work. Toby Still don't need to fight, by the way. 16, his ult's back as well. Good luck, T1. One more fight. Oh, they're going to catch owner. He's over there on the right side, but he is poppy. Is it going to matter? almost kills Kyria. It's just insane, but Jax. finds the angle on the Toby in the back. Jax finds Pace. A. Finally, Faker goes in, but I'm not sure if that's the angle. Pace is dead. Is he just is oh, dead, he lives. But he will not have it in the oh. game, and they have a wave and bot, and Gen G, they just booked their tickets to the finals. Oh yeah, what a game. Right one more fight. One more fight for T1, but it's not enough. It doesn't come together, and even with... What a game. Thank God we had that uh, that GA. And they try to kill him a I thought for a second that Jax is going to carry that. And as you say, Gen G are going to be the team to advance the finals first here against their old nemesis T1. Yes. It looks my heart like, racing. Although the inhibitor is going to respawn. And is going Wait a to second. Delay just, just end the game. End the game, boys. Give me my 60 no, bucks. They will take down the Nexus. It looks like it's Karia and Owner. They are so desperate as Gen G. Oh, here comes Guma. Gonna take out Pace. Chill. They're going to the finals and they nice. booked their ticket to Worlds. You got $100 to get 60? Yes, that's how betting works. Thank you very much. That's a coming. So T1 out of Worlds? No, they're fine. They can find a way in.